Greetings, family. This is Bomani Tamba, and we are live with uh, our brother, Kala Genesis, and we're here to talk about this wonderful Liberia reconnection and investment tours. Uh, so what we're looking at is uh, July 20th to the 30th, 2023, but we may even have something closer, but that's what we're organizing. So we're looking to let people know that uh, let's build back up our repatriation homeland uh, Liberia is celebrating 200 year anniversary of the repatriation settlement from 1822 to 2022. Yep. Uh, yes, I want to know if people ever heard the name of Joseph Jenkins Robert. I was literally about to give away everything, but when people just literally process that, and because, brother, I appreciate your energy and on this connection that we're doing, because you're educating us about this incredible movement. And literally, brother, it is um, an incredible movement because you're talking about 1822. So that's predates Garvey and everyone else that we know in this prominent uh, Pan-African movement. You know, So we're going to get into that family. And we're going to also show you some details that's on our website. So let me just give you the link right here, family. Once you get to our website, Africa for the Africans.org, you're going to be able to just go to the main menu and then you're going to see Liberia Reconnection and Investment Tours uh, for July 2023. And you may say that that is far away, but we do have a full schedule that we have literally already for uh, this year. So what I'm learning to do more and more is to put together schedules ahead of time. That way you can be clear on it. So that is literally what we're looking to do. And we're going to get directly into the connection from Joseph Jenkins, Robert, the first Liberian president, from that time all the way to what's going on in Liberia for that 200-year energy. And we have that that our expert, uh, Kala Genesis, so he's going to break those things down. But always want everyone to understand that uh, we as a people are responsible for what needs to be done in Africa. Our focus needs to be on Africa. If you're a black person, you don't need to be focused and thinking on anywhere <coughs> else than our black our countries that we're in. So we're talking about uh, the African continent, we're talking about the Caribbean islands, and we talk about other black countries around the world. Uh, it is very important that we do these connections to where we can just make these moves. So in order for us to have this level of independence, we have to reconnect and also not just reconnect and travel to different countries and enjoy the beautiful countries. We have to also invest. Now, one of the things that people have always hear me talk about when it comes to investment is uh, Ghana. And Ghana is one of our foundation. But what we're looking to do is expand and take things to another level to connect with more countries. And our featured country that we're going to be dealing with uh, for the next few years is Liberia. And people have seen the work that we have done and you know, basically build up the energy and create an incredible level of tourism in countries like Ghana. I'm always telling people that they see the people that we bring to the country, but the influence of what we have done from 2006 to now is also encourage so many other people to get into the world of tourism investment uh, to different countries and also get into going there and this you know building a foundation so with that energy that we have built we're saying hey let's expand to more countries like you see me have other countries on the the itinerary you have senegal gambia tanzania south africa and then now you have liberia which is going to stand strong as our focus country and color genesis He's going to be breaking these things down, family, on why are we doing all this. Because he's like, Liberia, what are these guys up to? And things. Uh, Our brother, Kala Genesis, uh, for those who don't know you, if you can introduce yourself to the people. Okay, I'm the Kala Genesis, uh, my Dwayne McCullough, Kala Genesis. I'm the author of Journey to the Promised Land, okay, Voyage of the Bark Azor, the only historical novel written on the Liberian history, the only. Uh, this uh, this Liberia is has been erased deliberately held from us and erased from history, <laughs> literally erased from history, erased from memory, erased from history, erased from Black America. And and the reason why I am passionate about Liberia is Liberia asks asks uh, it's a conundrum. It asks a fundamental question, right? Um, we talk about the founding fathers of America. Thomas Jefferson, James Madison, George Washington, all these other people, right? But you don't know about the founding fathers of Liberia, Joseph Jenkins Roberts, okay? Hillary Teague, Elijah Johnson, Randolph Cooper, 
uh, uh, several other people, uh, uh, Stephen Allen Benson. These are the founding fathers of Liberia. They wrote letters and stuff like that. So my whole thing is this. Why do we know about the first president of America, George Washington, and we don't know about the first president, black president in the world of a republic, Joseph Jenkins Roberts? We know nothing about him. And so my whole thing is this. Uh, Liberia, was, and as I put in my novel, right, Liberia was basically uh, the black man's answer to racism in America. But Liberia has been erased from history by people, by one, by race traders. I'm going to talk about the race traders who tried to erase Liberia. Race traders like Charles Spurgeon Johnson, who was, uh, 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 from what I hear, uh, 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 he was admired by Barack Obama. He was a mixed, uh, looks like a mixed race black man. When I, he wrote the book about Liberia called The Black Republic. In the book, basically, he was basically trying to uh, uh, talk about all the stuff that Liberia was doing wrong and everything, right? Now everything wrong, but he did. He basically was saying, uh, in the justice, because you were born in America, that you makes you an American. So this idea of having a nation of your own Africa was a threat to the people who wanted to be American. Now I have no problem with somebody wanting to be American, but why go through the lengths of discrediting a, 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 a sincere attempt by this country that was struggling its old history? to be, preserve itself as a nation. It's because of why? Because there's so many black men who believe that the white man's world is the future. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna say something uh, very controversial in the, next, in the next second, right? Frederick Douglass says something that really, really bothered me, right? He said, look, why would I go to Africa and leave all the progress and science and everything development to the white man? So basically he, he doesn't believe that the black man is capable of building railways, telegraph in his own land. So if he wants all those things, right? Because that's what it has nothing to do with uh, America. It has everything to do with America's infrastructure, its development. See, the black man, uh, Edward Wilmot Blyden, who was a founder of uh, the father of Pan Africa, as I said in my book, right? He said from his college at Fort Ray Bay College in Sierra Leone, and he was once a statesman in Liberia. He said, everything the black man needs and wants is right here on these shores. These two territories, Sierra Leone, Liberia, everything you need. All the, the suffering we're going through in America, the lynchings, towns burning and everything, all the things can be solved by the black man building his own land and building a homeland, a nation for himself. And he was talking about the people, the black men in the diaspora, the slave descendants. You know, we need a territory of our own because we have a unique experience in the world and we know how to build things. Let me tell you how, how great Liberia was at one time, right? You think about something. People say, well, what did the idea of Liberia, uh, uh, Freetown, CLM start? And my, my research said that the idea of returning to Africa as old as the first black people brought to these shores. The first, back in the 1600s, there were black people talking about, we should leave this land and go to Africa and build a, uh, end the slave trade, but it was dangerous to travel across the ocean at that time because of the slave, uh, uh, the slave, uh, uh, slave trade, slave vessels were armed and you could be kidnapped and, and sold back to slavery. I'm gonna tell you about this one incident that happened right around uh, this, uh, the 1760s, I believe, right? There were two black businessmen who sailed to the coast of where Liberia is right now, Bossa Cove. And they were talking about looking at a, a place to settle on the continent long before Liberia was thought about, long before Freetown, right? So they sailed along the coast. And what happened was <coughs> they were intercepted by, they were betrayed by local uh, 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 tribesmen and Portuguese slave traders, and these businessmen who were educated businessmen were kidnapped and sold back into slave, put on a slave ship and sold back into slavery. They had never been slaves before, but they were kidnapped and stripped and sold back into slavery. So the idea of returning to Africa needed uh, uh, some sort of military assistance. That's why the U.S. Navy assisted in this. Why? Because it was dangerous to cra travel across the Atlantic. As a black man, you know, because you could be kidnapped and sold into Brazil, any of these islands, Cuba, and anything like that. And so, therefore, uh, uh, Freetown and Liberia became safe haven. They became a threat to this institution of slavery. And immediately, even before they start building a republic, 
Liberian settlers began waging a war against the slave trade on the coast. They began cap cap capturing slave ships uh, in Sierra Leone. So, so, some certain slave uh, uh, people on slave ships were executed and uh, were put to death. And uh, people were liberated and put to death. That's written out of history too. When uh, was slave, sometimes with slave masters, slave slave traders were uh, were shipwrecked on Liberian shores. They were, they were executed, you know. And so, therefore, they put the slave trade down by one cutting off the local people from Europeans. So they took control over the coast, you know. So anything going, they so anything going into the coast. That's what the tension was. Before the indigenous people, uh, the, the slave traders, whoever, just show up to the coast, they get what they want and everything. Then the Liberian, when they became, began settling there, they put an end to that. They put an end to that. So therefore, the whole idea of Liberia was to end the slave trade, end human bondage, create a republic, create education, create a modern republic. And it was on the shores of Liberia where modern Africa was born. There would be no Nigeria. There would be no Ghana. There would be none of these countries in, in Africa had Liberia never been formed because the prevailing notion was at the time was Africa could never have a modern democratic or republic society. They could never have a government. You know, that black man could never have a government. Black man could never govern himself. He could be a kingdom under a mandate or a protectorate of a European power, but he could never be the, the idea of Africans having di uh, diplomats, embassies and stuff like that that uh and borders and checkpoints like a modern republic and its own currency as a modern republic was unheard of and so therefore with if liberia stands as a republic what does that say about the rest of the continent the rest of the continent is saying wait wait a minute here you told us that we're inferior we have another thousand years before we catch up to the world why is that black republic on the corner of west africa thriving so it was imperative that the the, the european imperialists and the colonists destroyed Liberia because it was given inspiration and hope to all these Africans. And every and Liberia was a country that led Africa out of colony colony. It wasn't Ghana in 1957. The process was long before uh, uh, Ghana came on the scene. Kwame Nkrumah was a student of Liberia. Matter of fact, some people believe Kwame Nkrumah was actually Liberian. Kwame Nkrumah studied in Lincoln University in America. He was very friendly. He knew all about the uh, Liberia. He been, been to the country and everything, and it gave him the confidence that uh, that he could run their country. Same thing with the first Nigeria's first president, Nnamdi Azikiwe. He wrote uh, articles praising Liberia. Right when Liberia was being attacked by Western colonial, he said, "No, this is a great country." Nnamdi Azikiwe is a graduate of Howard University in America. So between Liberia and the African Americans and everything, we played a major role. And the developing of the free, uh, the modern Africa and the modern uh, republics that, that emerged uh, post post World War II. Nelson Mandela was given sanctuary and money by uh, President Tubman in Liberia. Every last single African leader from Ivory Coast to the Congo and everything, uh, Monrovia was a was a place. To the young African revolutionary, this that was a place. They. Fellowship, they uh, uh, hang together, they party together, they study together, and everything. Monrovia was a place, but all this was written out of history for a reason. Why? Because they don't want you thinking that uh, thing. Patrice Lumumba said something interesting in his book, when he said in his last letters. He said, "Look, our story has to start from Africa and our cities. It can't be the story of Africa can't be told from Brussels, London, and all these other places in Europe." I remember that, you know. He said like this, and he was talking about Liberia, you know, Liberia had the power to tell Africa's story. You know, that's why we have to have our own story. You cannot listen to what foreigners say about a black state. You have to get it from the source. You have to, we have to tell our own story because they'll make up their own story. And the bottom line, because they control the media, that's their story becomes our reality. You know, the Hutus and Tutsis hate each other, blah, blah, blah. Now, Tutsis and Tutsis were marrying and intermarrying and stuff like that for centuries. It was only until the Europeans came there and divided them. You know, on uh, uh, this, they began uh, 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 talking about the Hutus or uh, they, they, the, the Europeans favored the Tutsis because they were more, look more Caucasian, I guess. And they were somewhat lighter skin. And so they favored them and they created this animosity and jealousy between the two groups that didn't exist before they got there. Same thing in South Africa, right? Let me tell you a story about South Africa, right? 
of uh, the African, uh, uh, the Pan Africans Congress was founded by African Americans and Black South Africans, educated Black South Africans, right, around the turn of the last century. Uh, so, so people don't realize this that there was an African American community in in Johannesburg, you know, and Cape Town. People don't realize that they work for Europe, uh, uh, American companies and whatnot, but it was a black black community there. The first modern black community was African Americans in South in Johannesburg, right? And these people, these black people, were they were so highly so. The African Methodist Episcopal Church was there. Bishop Henry McNeil Turner built his church there in South Africa. And the black South Africans basically saying, if these black people could uh, 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 have uh, 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 be civilized like the whites, why do we uh, why, why are we oppressed? So they began give, trying to give the, the black settlers of America uh, honorary white status and all those kinds of stuff to divide the locals. So out of that black settlers became this African consciousness, what we call black consciousness, right? And black consciousness is the root of, uh, you. without black consciousness, right? You cannot have pan-Africanism. Let me say that again. Without black consciousness, right? Being conscious that the, the, your worldview is that you see yourself as a black man in a white world. You cannot have pan-Africans because it won't work. Being black is the basis of be a pan Africanism and African nationalism and black unity in the world, okay? An African pan African in the world. The, um, the, uh, uh, the pan Africans comics was formed, then later the ANC, right? And uh, the uh, 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 Soweto Gospel Choir. Many, Af many, many um, South Africans studied in, in black colleges in America, right? And, and back and forth and everything. So there's a long history of African Americans and South Africans working together, right? So so we have that we had that long history, you know? Mm -hmm. And then what happened was uh the Europeans said, you know something? We're gonna they 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 played a trick. They did this thing where there's one Zulu guy who was a doctor, right? And the Europeans were like, this is another thing. This is this is this is happens to say. They were calling him a nerd, a white man. The white people were saying this because he was educated, right? Mm -hmm. And they tried to discredit him in the eyes of his fellow Zulu. You're not a true Zulu. You know, a true Zulu. What is a true Zulu? You mean to tell me because I got a suit and I got an education, I'm not Zulu anymore? So they tried to alienate the educated black mm -hmm. people from the masses. Same thing goes on here in America and everything, everybody. They educate the... Why? Because the educated people know how to take on the Europeans. Had, had, had Zimbabwe and Zambia had educated black people in their country, they wouldn't have signed their over their country away on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a thing and taken all their land away. They didn't know what they were signing. So therefore, so therefore, what the Europeans do in Africa is they alienate the educated people, the people who can speak English and people who know who can read and write and so like They alienate them from the masses. And they began praising the backwardness in Africa, right? They say, oh, King Zulu Shaka would be appalled if you guys talk about building schools for the local people, you know? Shaka Zulu wasn't against that, right? Out of which came two different movements in KwaZulu Natal, right? One was the pan africans Congress and the ANC, and the other was Nkata, right? Nkata was tribalist. They didn't believe in pan-Africanism. They didn't believe in uh, 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 black unity and everything. They were just strictly Zulu, the Zulu nationalist, Zulu ethnocentrist, and everything. It's a problem still threatening Zulu. But as more Africans get more educated, they they don't vote in Kata. You know, do you remember the, the Kata wars back there when when uh, uh, when all that was going on during the read up to Mandela's election? Remember that? Absolutely, brother. Yeah, and the, the Europeans have been cultivating Kata for decades. Why? Because the Kata is going to give them what they want. And Qatar didn't have a problem with the apartheid government because they got they they had control over their land and everything like that. And so therefore, this is what the Europeans wanted. What happened was when people say, What's going on with tribalism in Africa? I said, Look, it's not between Zulus and somebody, it's, it's an internal war between the Zulus, right? Some who believe in a modern Africa, modern black state, right? And some of them believe in a tribalist state. You know, that's what the Nkata versus ANC conflict was all about. And King Boo Lazy, he was a friggin', uh, he was a he was a traitor. He was a race traitor, you know. And so, therefore, this is a problem we have. The same problem we have in 
South Africa is the same thing we have in Liberia, right? Where people see themselves as part of their tribe. Why? Because that's what Europeans want. You know, they want to see Africans fighting each other. They want to see other. They, they the bottom line is this: we have a problem in Africa where nobody wants to respect black authority. You know, black real black authority. In Africa, how you get elected is by uh, rallying up your tribesmen, you know? You go out there, you do your tribe dance, right? When you get elected, you go robbing them. They don't care, you know? You go you go up there, you're doing the tribal dance and everything. When you go back, get back in office, it's back business as usual. This is a game that's been playing all over Africa, you know? And what what, what I like about Liberia is this, right? When the, when the people, when the founding fathers of Liberia got there, like Elijah Johnson, he put his foot up so many people's ass, you know. He was from uh, Chester, uh, Pennsylvania, right? He fought in the War of 1814, you know. And then when he went to Liberia, he said, look, I this is my home. I'm planting my flag here. And the bottom line, the British offered them protect. He said, no. He said, he said I'm not going to put the raise the British flag here because it's going to take us too much trouble to bring it back down. He said, the days don't want us here. We're going to go to war. We have a right to return to our ancestral continent. We're going to build our home here. If anybody has a, a, a problem with that, we're going to go to war. And they did. And they defeated everyone that went against them. But they had help from the local people, King Boatswain. Eventually, all most of the tribes people came to the Liberia aid and joined the Republic. You know, and said, look, yeah, you know, it's, it's not worth it. Let me join the Republic. And Liberia is the only country because of this, right? Because of that war and everything like that. Liberia is the only country you don't see Europeans in the outland farming and stuff like that. You don't see it. Liberia is the only country that you can say is an all-black state. Good point. Only country in Africa where only Africans and black people could own land and become a citizen. You know? The only country. There's no other country in Africa where this is possible. You know? And so, uh, so that's perfect, Carla. And um, I'm hoping that you can take a break. I know you can go on and explain it because there's so much history in this. So, man, every time I talk to you about Liberia, I just get excited because I'm always looking at Liberia and Sierra Leone when I was doing my early studies. And I don't think I studied enough about the those connections of Liberia and Sierra Leone, but that was a part of our foundation study because you know I came from this us doing study groups and us reading all these books on this bookshelf and watching all these DVDs. And I appreciate you just educating us about what's going on in Liberia as far as history and, and certain misconception, because we all need to know, because this is one of the foundations. You know, we talk about Liberia and Sierra Leone, I'm talking about family. Those are, you know, while everyone else was in colonization status, both those nations were set up for our repatriation. Now, we have heard a lot of misconception and, and what went right and what went wrong, but that's why Carla is here as an expert like literally this brother's an expert and has his novel and have a whole lot of documentation to share. But what I want us to get into is to, to show a clip from a good brother, Dr. Umar Johnson, and then we're going to get into why it's so important that we come together and do these reconnection journeys uh, to different parts of Africa. I know sometimes people say, well, these countries have been through civil war and so on, but many countries that we even, that I actually even go to in Africa, they have all had their version of civil unrest, all of them, including uh, Ghana, Tanzania, and so on. You just name the countries. So there's no perfect situation, but what I also always tell people is, you know, that's why that's how it works. Sometimes you go through these motions of things, and then you 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 know it's destroyed, and then we rebuild. So right now we're in a complete rebuilding situation. And so, I, want, well, I, right. want, I want to think about this. All think right. about a. Uh, um, uh, a caterpillar, right? Right? And he goes through a, uh, uh, what they call a chrysalis, right? You know what that does? He basically, like I said, when you form a nation, right? A nation's going to go through trials and tribulations. It's, it's what it is. People. France was not always France, right? France was not. They, France had all these different warring tribes, the Lombards, the Calvins, the Franks, all these other people. They had, eventually became Frenchmen, you know? Same thing with the British, everybody else, right? It's no different in Africa, right? When people put together a situation, right? They go through a metamorphosis, you know, they build everything. Just like a, what you call, like a, a, a caterpillar goes into a, a, a chrysalis, right? right? A chrysalis, right? Then out of which it's, it's going through all this internal strife and everything. 
then out of which the butterfly emerges, you know? And so therefore, that's so Africa is no different, you know, Africa. But what happens is Westerners and, and, and Negro Peans always trying to pick at the wounds, pick at the stuff like that, you know, make it seem like there's something so different than what uh, uh, Africa is going through than any other people go through. Do you understand that Japan wasn't always a unified nation? They had dynamos and samurais and shoguns dividing up the territory. You know, in the mighty China, yeah, you know, in China. China. So they had civil wars, stripes, and everything like that. You know, everyone goes through it. But the whole thing is in Africa, they, the Negro, the Negro Pian says we're better off. Uh, 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 thank you, experience in Liberia. Thanks for joining us, brother. You know, this brother's out of sight, man. He was just on Dynasty's show, just lighting the board up, man. You know, <laughs> like giving us, give, kicking real knowledge, bro. Experience in Liberia, and so therefore. <laughs> Like any other country, any other place in the world, they uh, 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 um, uh, they they any other country in the world, there is always uh, problems and always uh, uh, um, uh, uh, things going on, you know. And so, so therefore, like anybody else, like any other place in the world, there's going to be problems and everything, but there's always a solution. The Negro Pins of the world, right? Not not unapologetic, whatever. The Negro Afro Sheik Negroes, they what they do is they talk about Africa's problems while they live in the comfort of America and Europe. You know, you know. Oh, Africa is just so like that. Well, have you been to Chicago lately? You know, you know. Have you been to Detroit lately? Uh, oh, oh, Gary, Indiana, just such a shining success. You know, you know. <laughs> Look at rural America. Rural America is falling apart. There's always. Uh, problems all over the world. But the whole thing is this. Uh, if we black people put our money and our time and effort in building Africa, we have a uh, thing. Now, people say, well, what do you mean, Carla? I'm saying like this. There's nobody in the uh, world that has their whole foot in America, except for them Native Americans, right? Native Americans. Well, what are white people? Look, I grew up around white people, right? Don't believe this stuff was American crap. I had white boys tell me all the time, yo, shit breaks out, man. I can go back to Italy. I had, I had white boys tell me when I was, when I was oh, a kid. Wow, go back to Italy. Wow. I, yo, I'll go back to Italy. You know, well, they know where they come from then. They know where they huh? come from. Yeah, they were Italian kids, Italian kids, Jewish kids. When I, Every summer they go into Tel Aviv or Yafo for summer vacation, you know? They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. They got one foot in America and one foot in their own world. There's nobody. The only group of people that got everything in America is the black African American. You know, the only group of people. This is why we act the way we do, because we don't have a mental escape. That's why we're, uh, the brother, the work, the brother Bomani's doing is good. Uh, Dinah Samir is doing is good. That's why the work that uh, 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 Mark Blanton is doing is good in this in South Africa. It's an escape. See, the whole thing is, is like I said, the African American or the, the descendants of slave mind is different. You know, it's particularly African American. Because these are brothers from Jamaica. They can go back to Jamaica. They have some money. It's not, you know, it's Barbados and everything like that. But the African American has never had, 400 years, had any space to himself. Good point. We have absolutely no power, no, no say so, or anything that goes on in our life. You know, we have no space. You know, what's the, what's the, what are like a, the Infinity Gauntlet? You have the space stone. What does the space mean? Space means you control space. And then when white people let you know you're in their space, right? Because they could say, "Yeah, hey, yeah, you know, I don't like black people like that." There's nothing you can do about it because you're. So, this is something you got to deal with. They control the space now. Black people are trying to in America is change the space, right? They're trying to say, "No, no, this is a multicultural." That's bullshit. It's still a white space. America's a white space. They're yeah. only playing games with you, right? Oh you know, yeah, they'll tell you, oh yeah. We America. I hate when people say that we Americans and all of it. What the where is we shit from? When did we become Americans, uh, Bon Lamont? You know, when did we become know. Americans? They have not listened to the great Malcolm X, who broke they, it down like that. No if I was American, well, would I need a civil rights? Would I need a civil rights movement for? You know, yeah, is, Malcolm X talk about you know we're the victim of Americanism. Yeah, we're victims of America. <laughs> you know, we're victims of America. We're America's subjects, right? They'll give us a citizen. This is a hypocrisy. Is they mockingly call you a citizen, right? But the bottom line is, you ain't a citizen. You you a citizen on paper, but it don't mean nothing. You know, they'll citizen like yo nigga get in the car. Like, you know? like a sitting duck. <laughs> yeah, you're a citizen, all right. When that 
If you're a citizen, then why does everybody come over here and feel like they're your superior? You got people from shithole countries like in Indonesia, Vietnam, when they're coming over here looking their nose down on black America, you know? You know, I'm like, yo, black America, we we built this country. We yeah, we did that, but everybody comes over here like you even got some Somalis talking shit to us or whatnot. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, your country is a, the shithole of shitholes, and they're coming over here like, yeah, these black Americans are a problem. What the hell? Yeah, you I'll tell you, I don't, I don't want to interject something real quick. Uh, and people may be upset with me and things like that, but family, our beautiful African nation will not be progressive without the African diaspora, especially our energy from the Africans who live here in America, who have access to many wonderful resources that can change the dynamics of things. So our continent <laughs> has to open up to us as a diaspora so we can be one to compete against the Indians, the Chinese, the Lebanese, and, and all the other groups of people that are dominating and buying up land and taking over Africa. It's real family. <clears throat> and also we have to redefine the diaspora. Now, right now, the legal term for African diaspora is not you and I, you know, the legal term of diaspora is people born on a continent who live abroad. That's the legal term. I know some black people are like, yeah, we're part of six reasons. No, that don't apply to us, you know? Everything is legal, illegal, legality. They're not talking about U.S. black citizens who have been here for generations, slave descendants. They're talking about people who were uh, uh, born in uh, the uh, West, uh, born in uh, uh, Africa, migrated to the West. That's the diaspora. That's not going to save Africa. Those people are basically uh, um, refugees. Are you see in Ukraine right now, you know? You got hundreds of thousands of people. And that now people are facing starvation in Africa, in Europe. They're facing starvation because they're like, we have no place to go and everything like that. The countries in uh, Africa are too weak to, they, that's what that, that's what they will pride themselves on. A bunch of people. People in their 40s and 50s still students. You know? <laughs> they're still students. One girl had three kids and I'm a student. What? So they're, they're over in Europe milking the system, right? Milking the welfare, milking the free education, milking all that stuff like that, right? Why they do that, right? Because European countries, whether it's Ukraine and everything, got interest in Africa. Africa will sell their birthright, sell their everything out, right, just for a green card to come in these countries. It's happening right now in Australia. Australian and Canadian companies are raping uh, uh, South Sudan, right? And you know what the South Sudan what they did was? Okay, they got all these South Sudanese Jews in Australia right now wrecking havoc. Wow. They, they, they're they joining gangs and everything like that. And I'm saying to myself, that ain't African-Americans now. You can't live. And the whites, whites in South Africa, whites in Australia and New Zealand, like, yo, man, these black man, they bring their gang. They're not coming from America. You know, they're coming from the Africa. You know, they're coming like, why? Because you can't take Africans and put them in a European society, right? And, to, and, 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 and so you can't assimilate Africans into Europe, uh, European society. You're just kidding yourself. Because assimilation requires marriage, inter, inter, marriage and everything, you know? I can assimilate into an African society because, like I said, my fiance is Liberian. When I can assimilate into, you know what I'm saying? Because we're both black, Absolutely, you know? You know? Congratulations. But, but, but you cannot assimilate an African. You could call yourself, I mean, it's like, let me give you an example. Remember right before 9-11 happened? A lot of Iranians and Iraqis were living a good life in New York and New Jersey. Remember those times? Yeah. Remember that? Then what happened? What happened after that? You know, who didn't they, they get shaken down? Yeah, the re restaurants are closing up, and a lot of them joined the jihad movement. You know, they were living good. They were out there dating with their sports cars and everything, with their slick back hair and whatnot. Thought they were like brown Italians or whatnot. They thought they were living good. That oh, we made it to the promised land. Nine eleven happened. Yo, yo, y'all ain't y'all just ain't white. Y'all ain't y'all you know, ain't white. Look at that the 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 the, the Tanaris guy that's uh, the, the the death penalty the Boston bomber you know oh yeah yeah absolutely yeah, remember, yeah, remember remember he got the death the Supreme Court upholds his death penalty right now you look at him he looks like a white boy doesn't he he's like a little white boy you know absolutely. you would think you, you would think he'd be oh he could probably have the chicks and whatnot you know he's a good looking kid when I know hormone like that but but what is it about these people that come from these countries they can't assimilate it's not easy to assimilate. When you're part of a hated religion or hated race, you can't do it. You know, so all these Africans, man, the only thing the reason why Africans are doing well in America is because of African Americans. There's an African American culture here, you know, that's it. 
you know, and that's going to that's going to change in a few years, you know, because after Jesse Smoulet and all these other black crime, there's a, America's <laughs> tired of us, you know, Erica's tired of all our, our shit, you know. And so the bottom line is Africans like, oh, we're not like dude, man, white people, when they get rid of us, man, they're going to come for y'all, too. You know, you think you think white people are like, uh, uh, no, kind of, I'm not a kind of, they don't want your black ass here, you know. Come on, man. They don't want you here. They don't want you in America. You know, like I said, get your money, get your bag, go back to Nigeria. You know, that's what we're doing. So what I'm saying is this. I know the average 99% of black people are like, okay, well, but I would, when I talk to most black people, right, they say, they tell me, right, even the ones the most assimilated black people in America, right, they tell me, man, if I had someplace else to go, right, even if it ain't just for a vacation, it's psychologically, it's all psychological. You know, it's, it's all psychological. Black people don't have a mental escape. Any white person can get up and just beat us down. You know, sure. you got to do this. Right. But if you have you're like, no, nah, you know, I don't I don't I, I, I'll wait. You know, I, 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 I think I'm going to go to Ghana for a year. I think I'm a I got I'm going to go to Namibia. You know, I got I got land over there. I got property over there. I'm going to spend time over there. Then, you know, they don't have that power. over you. Remember this to say, go back to Africa. Go back to Africa. Remember that? But now when we talk about we're building bridges to Africa, that now they're telling us, oh, y'all don't belong in no Africa. Now, brother Bamani, and I've been studying this for the last 10 years, you got white supremacists who are preempting. I told you this on the last show. You got white supremacists, right, posing as black people in America, right, getting into chat rooms with Africans and whatnot, trying to sabotage our repatriation movement. You know, they're not going to let us go like this. You know, if we say, you know something, you could have America, we're going to build in Africa. They're like, you would think, right? There's, there's this notion that a lot of our ancestors made a mistake, even Marcus Garvey. They thought they could negotiate with the Ku Klux Klan. Okay, you want America? You can't negotiate with these people. The Ku Klux Klan will sabotage. You say, okay, you don't like us, we're getting out of here. Uh-uh. You think they're going to let you just leave just like that? No. The whole idea is to make sure your life, no matter where you go, you're miserable. Because that's why you think, why you think you got rednecks going to Ghana wearing rebel flags and shit, you know, flaunting that shit? Why you think you got neo-Nazi groups in Angola and uh, Zambia and shit like that in the Congo and everything all throughout South Africa? We got neo-Nazi training camps throughout Southern Africa and shit, you know? Why? Because they're not going to let us have Africa just like that. You didn't think that, no, it don't work like that. We got to fight. You know, it just, it's just, this is just the beginning. We have enemies in Africa. We have enemies in our own race that we're going to have to deal with, you know? We got people like that, that that's selling their souls to the Chinese, you know? This is a war. This is a final war. This is Armageddon is about to take place. And we sit here and think that we're just going to be sitting under America forever. It's, it's not like that. The world, America is crumbling right before our eyes. You know, what you see in Europe right now is just the beginning, you know? What you see right now going on is just the beginning. America is about to crumble. So therefore, like I said, our testament is going to be Liberia. If we get that right, and that country emerges as a shining example, never colonized, never occupied, never had any U.S. troops and everything for the most part in there, never anything, never. Uh, there's no basis there for America or anybody like there's that. There's right? nothing, you know. And so the bottom line, Liberia held, despite all its problems, it held on to its sovereignty. You have, have Liberian, they're like they rather be poor and free. That's the, that's the mentality of Liberians. Other countries in Africa, like, I hate to put Gato Ghana on the rug. They sold... Slotted Let's be honest, man. Let's stuff. be real. Let people know what's going on. Yeah, and they sold their freaking soul for a few roads and a few... The George, Wash, George W. Bush Highway in Ghana. Come on. You know? You know, you sell your soul for a couple of roads and a couple of infrastructure projects and everything. You're not a free country. Liberia is a testament of how we can stay free. You know, 200 years since we landed on that shores and whatnot. And it's a country that still has never fallen. That flag still of the Republic of Liberia still stands high. You know, the spirits of J.J. Roberts and all these other people are rejoicing at what we're doing right now. They're up in heaven rejoicing at what we're doing right now. And so now for now, it's our job as the black people in America to say, you know something, we're going to make Liberia, Sierra Leone's places. We're going to make it like Israel. If we have, uh, if uh, if there's something Liberia needs from our college, we're already doing. Tennessee State University is partners with Monrovia College. You know, set the whole bunch of laptops. So we need more of that. We need more 
of our institutions, right? Building Liberia. Is it building? Look, I look. I rather build Liberia than try to a uh, feeble attempt to rebuild the hood. I say it again. I rather us put our thing in building Liberia, building Africa, than trying to rebuild the hood. You know, I said that on Diane's show Wednesday night. You know, I said, look, I think uh, building Africa in the future, investing in Africa and building Africa and just letting uh, this black America just go. Because a lot of us, most of us live in the suburbs anyway, you know. And we basically say, you know, we got to go back to the hood. But you know, the hood don't want you to build. Look who the hood exalts right now. The most dangerous people, the gangs, uh, the gangster rappers and all these other people that are destroying uh, black America, inner cities, left and right. What are you going to do to stop that? Nothing. There's nothing you can do. So all you can say is, you know something? Okay, that's what y'all want. Okay, fine. But the, those of us who are, who are pan-Africans and everything, we're going to build Africa because we don't see any future. You going to play one more, Johnson? Uh, Bamani, you're on uh, your mute. You're muted, Bamani. Uh, yes, brother. Let's uh, play this thing here. Absolutely. And uh, you're not going to even connect with more. And family, we are going to share more of the Liberia information on our website at africaforafricans.org. But wanted to literally just give you like a nice introduction. And trust me, family, there's nobody that can do it better about Liberia than uh, my brother Kala. And we've been like working on this and for like the last uh, two weeks, and now we, we just got the information about people like, whoa, Liberia. Yes, family, we're doing this. Let's hear our brother, Umar. Hunger, there's homelessness, there's starvation in Ethiopia. How many of you Ukrainian-loving Negroes got that same energy for our Ethiopian brothers and sisters? How many of you Ukrainian-loving Negroes got the same energy for our Ethiopian brothers and sisters. Let's go to Sudan. Let's go to Sudan. What about our Sudanese brothers and sisters? They dealing with a crisis right now. They dealing with a crisis right now. How many of you Ukrainian loving Negroes got the same energy for our Sudanic brothers and sisters? Our Sudanese brothers and sisters. Let's keep on going. Didn't the United States bomb Somalia? Didn't the United States just bomb Somalia? So if United States just bombed Somalia, why I don't see you Negroes running around talking about we need to send aid and support to Somalia? So let me get this right. Let me get this right. You got black people sending money, raising money for the Ukraine, but you ain't did a damn thing for Ethiopia. You ain't did a damn thing for Sudan. You ain't did a damn thing for for Somalia. You ain't did a damn thing for Haiti. When them Haitian Africans was at the border, some of y'all helped. Some of y'all helped. But we didn't see the outcry that we see right now. When our Haitian brothers and sisters was at the Mexican border, some of y'all helped. But we didn't see most of y'all being up in arms for the African Haitians at the border like you are for the Ukrainians. Look at you damn hypocrites. Look at you damn multicultural integrationists loving anything that ain't black. Look at you Negropeans. Look at you damn Negropeans. If Harriet Tubman was here, she would have shot most of you. If Harriet Tubman was here, she would have shot most of you. If Nat Turner was here, he would have put half you Negroes to sleep. You got all this energy for white people. You got all this energy for white people. You got all this energy for white people, but you ain't got the same energy for Africans who've been going through what the Ukrainians are going through for decades. All right, all right. Boom, boom, bam, bam, boom, boom, bam, boom, boom. Brother, that is fire, fire, fire. I couldn't say it better myself. Um, and uh, we, we need, we I'm need, we need him out there. I'm sorry, another country, but it's a lot of countries that that uh, need to be mentioned. Uh, there's uh, literally. Mali, in, Ethiopia, in Italy, you have Mali. Sudan. I mean, name the country. We have our own problems. Take us out. You, you, see what's going, you see what's going on in Africa right now. 16 nations abstain from voting against Russia. 16 countries. You know, 16 countries say, you know, we this is not our fight. You know, this is this is progress, bro. This is progress. So they're saying, man, and what gets me is this: there's still sanctions on Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe is being strangled right now. Because of sanctions and everything, they're giving white people back their land and everything in, in Zimbabwe, and, and Europeans got sanctioned, but they want us to help them out. We're not even unified to say, "Yo, look, 
you want to help take those sanctions off of uh, uh, Zimbabwe. There's not the the African consciousness is not even there. Like I said, the, the black consciousness is not even there. You know, you really let your what? I mean, what's the sense of having an African Union if if somebody could sanction one country, right? Every country in Africa, like okay, we're, we're gonna pull our, our embassies out of everything and forget it. You know, and, and take bring our students home, and everything. We're gonna make do. If Africans ever did that, see the whole thing is is we as black people, the black race, want a little bit of comfort, a little bit of comfort, right? Rather than real salvation. You know, that little green car sitting in European restaurants. And you got these guys running wild on Ukrainian chicks up there, you know, these black porn, African porn stars. When they just, you know, they, they, they're in heaven up there, you know, they're in white heaven up there with these uh, things. And they'll tell you, oh, man, they, you got these sisters bringing their, their white boyfriends back to the continent. You know, the bottom line is, you know, it's a, it's a mess. The black race is a freaking mess. You know, I'm so glad I didn't see none of that in Liberia when I went there and whatnot. You don't see, you don't see black women with white men. You know, I seen one. That was about it. But for oh. the most part, you don't see a bunch. Of, you don't you not not see a bunch of. You don't see. You definitely don't see no pedophiles walking around little children. You know you don't see that in Africa in Liberia. You know you don't see that. And I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell two stories. I'm gonna tell two, a couple of stories about like Liberia. Here's really gonna pick your spirits up, right? All right. Uh, you wanna put some pictures up uh, uh, before I tell the story? Put some uh, pictures up. Okay, that's, that's Joseph Jacobs Robbins uh, um, monument. In Petersburg, Virginia, I got a video clip of it. You know that I did uh, like well ten years ago, and that's a monument right there on Washington Street in Petersburg, Virginia. Uh, Joseph Jenkins Roberts was born in Norfolk, Virginia, in eighteen uh, uh, fifteen, right? And uh, uh, no, wait a minute, he was born in eighteen oh nine, I believe. Okay, eighteen oh nine, I believe. Uh, eighteen oh nine, and he moved to Petersburg, Virginia. Right? He was his he was a bit one of the free blacks in Norfolk, Virginia, and Petersburg, right? And so he moved to Petersburg and became a, a, a barber and uh, several tailors, and he, and he owned a shipping company, right? And he acquired so well he would ship goods from Petersburg to Norfolk on the on the Potomac River, and so therefore he built a successful business uh, thing. Matter of fact, the place where he was shipping from. Uh, I uh, in, in in Richmond, right? The, the the dock is still there. So if you look at this old mill, right, and you can look at pictures, black and white pictures from the eighteen hundreds or whatnot, that freaking thing is still there. You can imagine yourself. I'm sitting there like, damn. You can imagine with a ferry pulled up and everything like that. It's like shit. You know, it's like you went back in time. The same buildings are still there. You know, from that time period. <clears throat> so anyway, so in um, he moved to Liberia. And then he brought his wife, right? And uh, when he went there, he had uh, uh, started a business, his business in Liberia. And he joined the Merchant Princes, right, at the time, the Liberian uh, Society of Businessmen. And these men were some of the richest men in the world at the time, in Liberia. While, think about it, black people were in slavery and bondage, poverty all over the world. These Liberian men were importing and exporting cotton, coffee, and different things from America to Liberia, making a lot of money, you know? And they used that money to build buildings and uh, 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 mills and invest in their country. And so, therefore, basically, after the, the countries, uh, the, the, the governing colonies were making actual money and revenue, they said to themselves, you know something? Well, you know, they started making the plans for we could govern ourselves. What do we need the ACS and these white folks help for? You know, they said they started making plans to govern themselves. They said we we might like what like what you guys helped us out starting everything, but we could take this over. That was less than twenty years. You know, twenty years. They start making plans to self govern self governing themselves. That's a, remarkable. How long did America take to uh, uh, to become self government? You know, like two hundred years. You know, and Liberia did it in less than two decades. Less than two decades, they they basically formed treaties with the local tribes, you know, the Days, the Mambas, the Bassos, the Grebos, and all these other people throughout the country, you know, the Crew, the Kron, the Vi people, and all these other people, you know, the Golas. And these people were said, you know something? We're going to join the Republic. Now, what made Liberia so unique was this, right? And I say this all the time, right? Mon Even though Monrovia was a capital, it was called Christopolis at first. It was, Monrovia was the capital, right? 
most of the people, when I went to Liberia, you'll see the evidences, right? Settled up river. Now on the St. Paul River, there was you go up the St. Paul River and there's all these beautiful settlements, right? Farming settlements, right? These townships they they built. So if you went to Clay Ashland, you settled you if you're from Kentucky, most likely you settled in Clay Ashland, you know, Ashland, Kentucky. You know, and if you were from um from New York, you settled in the White Plains settlement, you know. If you're from Virginia, you settled in the Virginia settlement, you know. And there was Caldwell, there was Carysburg, there was a uh, um uh, 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 Arlington. Now, what uh, right here in Virginia Beach is the Hogarth family. They founded the Arlington uh, uh, settlement in Liberia. I went to their family reunion this summer. Right, I had a blast. Right, and uh, I was invited there by one of my Liberian uh, uh, elders, uh, uh, Anthony Barclay Moore. You know, you know he's. He's he's actually from Caribbean. He's from Barbados to say, you know, loves his herb. That boy loves his herb. You know, he's from Barbados to say. He's like a dreadlock, or whatever. But he's Liberian, and so basically, uh, uh, he invited me out and whatnot. And they knew they, the Hogarth family knew about me. So, oh yeah, matter of fact, I got to go out to Elvis Hogarth and met him. You know, he's a prominent Liberian. And they went. I went to the big farm. We had to, we had the rides out there for the kids and everything. It was a big thing. We had the stage set up and everything. We would. Had music, we had food, we had a blast, man. I had a freaking ball. That was in the, that was in, back in August. I had a blast, matter of fact. Matter of fact, that was the same night when uh, uh, uh that was the same day. The next day, that's when Dine, uh, Bomani was on the thing with Negro Pian. <laughs> that's ruined the whole thing when Bomani was on there with Negro Pian. That's 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 when that happened, right? I'm going home, you know. And I said like that. Yeah, I said. I said, I'm listening to the thing early in the morning. I said, wait a minute, we y'all y'all debating so early in the morning and whatnot, you know? You know, yeah, you and Negro Pian was going at it that morning and whatnot. Anyway, I had a good time. Anyway, the whole garden. Oh, yeah, was- Absolutely, man. You gotta educate these Negroes, man, that you know who's the, you know who, who run things and who's actually able to do things for black people than running their mouth. Because it's right. easy for everybody on YouTube to just run their mouth, but it's a different story when you can actually help black people and build something. So that's what people fear about people like myself. It's like I'm not into the, the the running them out and talking stuff. I'm about getting things done. Absolutely, it's like we're about to get this done in Liberia because it's about time that we made this move. Because I've been you know, I've been waiting for other people to step up, but hey, yeah, you know, it's just you know sometimes. Well, if, 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 if nobody's gonna do it, man, like I said, man, I, I said like, I was at the point where yeah, well, I'm gonna wait for somebody to come along, and now like, I figured mm-hmm. look, I gotta do this myself, you know. You know, I got I got to do this myself. I've been uh, leading people to Liberia for a long time. When I said I got to take the reins, you know, I got to do this. I got to tell Liberia's story from an African American perspective and everything. And right. so, therefore, like I said, I formed the group, the Association of African Americans mm-hmm. for Liberia in 2011. Why? Because I knew the centennial was coming up, and it, it took me 10 years of debating back and forth with Liberians. A lot of them didn't like me at first. Now they love me. <laughs> Not only do they love me, uh, Romani, they consider me a librarian. You know, I can get in any conversation right now, you know, and they'll say, yeah, Colin, just go back and help build it. You build your country. They call it your, they don't say librarian, they say your country. You know, I've been so influential in librarian pol- uh, culture and politics over the last decade and everything that people just consider me one of them. They, they gave up. They said, all right, Colin, you win. You're a librarian. You know, you win. You know? And my whole thing is, like I've always said, this there's, there's more good about Liberia than there is bad. Let's build on the good stuff. Do you want? Do, I'm sure Zimbabweans would love to put, trade places with Liberia. You know, you know. I'm sure a lot of people would love to trade places. You know, they got the mark of colonization on their stain on their history. Liberians basically never been colonized by white people. They never had that. They never had the, the 10 million people were murdered by the Belgium in the Congo. Liberia was spared from a lot of stuff that went on in much of Black Africa. So, like I said, Arlington settlement, and the reason why these settlements were so uh, prosperous is because they were independent. If you lived in a Liberian settlement, right, whether Edina, you know, that's a place we should take a trip to down in uh, thing Basakob and in uh, Buchanan, Edina. That's a beautiful little settlement. They got still got the stone church there. It's beautiful, you know. It was a settlement right there. Uh, historic settlement, beautiful city, beautiful tiny town, you know. Anyway, these towns were so self it They had farms. They all had skilled trades. They they had their own church or mosque, whatever like that. They had their town hall. They were completely self-sufficient. 
they only went to Monrovia to handle some major business or whatever. You know, Monrovia is like going into town or whatever. But they spent most of their time in their settlements, you know? That's what's so unique about Larry. That's why it was so successful. There weren't people on top of each other. You know, people in Clay Ashland stayed in Clay Ashland. You know, they may visit other <laughs> towns and everything like that. But for the most part, people had their own land. You know, people owned their own land. They had their own houses. They all built, all librarians built these nice uh, 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 framed houses, man, that were like mansions, you know? Some of them had riverfront properties, right? Right down the river, you know, on streams and everything. It was beautiful. They had their own docks, their own little bridges and everything like that. It was a really beautiful country, you know? And so, therefore, they lived a peaceful, tranquil life. Right? They were safe because the government and the borders protected them from their who? White people. Anyway, there was no white people. One time, there was this incident where a white guy in Morovia sailed in the St. Paul River. Everybody got alarmed. Right? What the hell is this white guy doing here? You know? You're already sitting there on the St. Paul River, right? And you may be fishing when you see a white guy. What the hell's going on? You know? That, that caused a major uproar. What the hell is the white guy was like, no, no, I'm just here. You know, like that. Everybody's like, we don't know what the fuck you're doing here. You know, we don't see no white man here. You know, <laughs> you know, that's how it was. It was space. It was our own space, you know, tranquility. And the bottom line is this. And they were like this, you know, look, you just can't stay here. You can't come here because when you come, more will come, you know, and next thing you know, your government's going to come and take over. So they kept white people the fuck out of there. You know, we don't care how much money you got to invest or not. You know, we don't want you here. You know, we'll take time. Like I was like, Barry said, we'll wait. Two, remember what Marcus Garvey said? We'll wait 200 years for our posterity, right? Right. Yeah. Well, 200 years is up, right? We have 200 years, right? Now we're, re we're ready to take back, take what's ours, you know? We have a state that's sitting there waiting for us that's ours, you know, that we're going to build. And we're, we're building with our Liberia, we're going to be able to connect with Africa, not as black people from America, but from a position of power and strength or already on the continent. And so that's what that's what we're gonna lose uh, lose there. We're gonna lose the so called African American identity. We're gonna take up an African identity soon. And so uh, this is this is what we love about uh, Liberia. This is uh, this. now one incident that really tells the story of Liberia. I have the, it on my blog. I wrote it on my blog. Right, it was a Santa Mali and Warley incidents. Right, these incidents happened around the time of uh, the Garvey movement. You know. All right, this is what happened. This guy, Sana Mali, was a uh, Sana Mali. Sana Mali was a uh, Liberian, right? He lived, he, he was an officer in the interior. Well, this one guy, let me see, let me find this. I'm going to read it to you. We'll read it. Let me read it. It's been so many years I wrote this, so I can't just, I'm just not going to do it. So for the sake of this. Okay. Color. Blog, blog spot, Liberia. Okay, here, pop right up. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, Bamani, I'll send it to you. If you want to, uh, if you want to put it on this big screen, you want to put this blog on the big screen. Uh, perfect, absolutely, brother, absolutely. Okay, here it is right here. It's a blog I wrote. It's about my, my blog page, called Genesis blog page, right? I wrote this in 2011. Okay, it says two incidents in 1920s Liberia showed the black world the limits of white supremacy, the Sandy Madney and Worley incidents. Okay, I don't know if you want to put it up or just want me to read it. Oh yeah, go ahead and read it, and I'm looking for. Um, <coughs> okay. I wrote, uh, this is 2011. This is a preamble to the blog. Liberia was founded as a haven for Africans in the West seeking freedom and independence. The whole point of Liberia is to have a place where African Americans can build themselves without interference from whites. It was clear to many thinkers during that time that black people, blacks needed to sever its ties with white America in order to become a people. White paternalism and even more dangerous was, was even more dangerous and brutal because it confirmed the notion that blacks were children and needed guidance from white benefactors. In Liberia, at, by the end of the World War II, many uh, generations of Africans, uh, African, uh, uh, excuse me, African American grew up governed by fellow blacks in Liberia, okay? 
Many had never been called a nigger. None were ever massacred like the Tulsa, Block Wall Street, Worldswood. They were used to seeing their leaders at the League of Nations sitting down like other sovereign people safe within their borders. This is what freedom is all about. Now, when you yield any part of that, you will give up your sovereignty. Liberia was a proud black republic, and the Sandemani and worldly incidents incidents uh, 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 are going to show what happens when white supremacy is brought to a brought to a free, proud black state, African black African state, called Genesis. Okay. Now, the first negative reaction to American activities came from February 18th with a revolt by the Guja and uh, Conga uh, clans in the Gola broke out against the government, the government of Liberia. The Secretary of the Interior, John Morris, was sent to investigate the situation. After two months' stay in the northwestern part of the Republic, Morris came to the conclusion that one of the main factors leading to it was the revolt was the conduct of the administration officials. He noted that in particular, two behavior of two uh, American Liberian officers Henry John Howard, Henry Henry J. Howard, and James Howard, who had abused their authority by collecting large sums of money, generally mistreating the native population, especially the Gola. Morris, we find ourselves in an awful situation of predicament. The whole interior is fermented as a result of the rule of these two commissioners. It is only by extreme careful handling that one may hope to restore a decent state of affairs. On the face of it, there was no connection between the Americans serving in Liberia and the outbreak of the Gola, uh, the, uh, uh, Gola Revolt. Morris reported, uh, devoted uh, nine pages to a description of Howard's misdeeds, his appointments. Morris argued that it had been a mistake from the beginning since Howard had been Major Young's personal choice for the position. And in fact, the link was drawn between the U.S. officials, because the U.S. officials are helping out in the interior. Okay, of Liberia. Okay, and the Gola outbreak. You know, some people say the U.S. officials were there instigating that. You know, in the in the hinterland. This is in the hinterland, my mind. And the Gola outbreak. Morris had probably come to the conclusion that reform and force upon the government by the military attaché, that's the American financial advisor and the American minister in 1950 had had neither uh, uh, strengthened the uh, the Liberian government rule nor the established an effective administrative, but to the reverse. So in other words, this idea that America could solve all your problems, Liberia would learn that Americans weren't really that good at dipl dipl diplomacy in Africa. So as well as the Syrian uh, Liberian authority in the Northwest, the Americans in his position was to blame for the situation, no less than the Liberians, since they had uh, 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 attributed failure to Liberians alone, without taking any responsibility among themselves. In addition, the U.S. officials in Liberia had pressured, had presented further demands that likely would broaden their power and involve them in more in Liberian affairs. So in other words, the U.S. officials were trying to set the stage up for they might colonize Liberia, using these outbreaks and everything to send more troops. In. Why, you understand where I'm going with this? Oh, yes, brother, absolutely. Okay, okay, uh, okay. Yet another factor leading was to the resentment was the Americans with a high-handed manner where American officials towards their African-American or Liberian counterparts. Incidents in which Liberians were disciplined or punished and were interpreted as acts of mistreatment in which black men were humiliated by whites. In other words, basically, they were basically uh, uh, using uh, um, the situation to humiliate Liberians in their own country. Now, the most serious dispute was the Sandemani affair, which involved three people, Mitchell, an American district commissioner, H. A. Sawyer, an American Liberian commissioner in the area bordering the French territories, and uh, and, and, and two additional districts, uh, Garma and San Quelle. San Quelle is where the, the OAU was formed. You know, in 1920, Sawyer accused Sandemani of keeping slaves, taking government money, and transferring uh, government property to his own name. As a consequence of these accusations, Mitchell sent a note announcing Santa Manny's uh, dismissal and ordered the commissioner to, uh, to present himself immediately to Morovia. Sawyer, who carried the message, was ordered to change Santa Manny if he resisted. 
Upon arrival in Monrovia, Sanamani reported to his superior, Secretary of Interior, complaining that Sawyer had taken advantage of the situation and ordered him changed without justification. As a result, Sanamani had been led on a way to Monrovia, a 12 day journey in chains, humiliated and degraded. Such behavior expressed the will of white Americans to control Liberia. Sanamani uh, added that while on the hands, on the way from Santa Quelle, I could hear the surprise of natives making a remark, now we know the white man has taken over the country away from the black people in Monrovia. For see the white man have put the, uh, the, the, district, uh, the, the, the district commission in chains and send them out of the country. Santa Mani was closely related to a number of Liberian leaders. And in addition, uh, he was a protege of both ex-president Barkley and the president-elect Charles B. Uh, B. C. B. King. As a result, of his public arrest was widely reported in the Liberian press. The bulletin of November 6, 1920, for example, printed an article says, is Liberia becoming a Georgia or a Texas? Which still is now a situation where a white American could take the liberty of chaining a humiliating a Liberian without a trial. Think about that. In America, that was the order of the day, you know? Several days later, another article appeared, followed by an investigation of charges against the Santa Manly, the reporter had discovered that Santa Mary did, in fact, keep slaves in various places in the Vi country, and indeed had sent his family money that had been illegally obtained. But at the same time, the newspaper attacked the Americans serving in Liberia, particularly who had chained Aunt Santa Mary and humiliated him unnecessarily. Another paper, uh, Monroe Weekly, uh, uh, wrote that Mitchell came from the state of Georgia. In his hometown, the paper reported there were posters saying, nigger, read, uh, read, and run. The paper remarked that Santa Mary's race was the first such humiliated, humiliated incident to occur in Liberia's Republic. The storm of resentment and the indignation triggered by the Santa uh, affair peaked following the, another incident, the Worley affair. In this time, the object was H.E. Worley, a financial advisor from the U.S. government, right? The, together with Ernest Lyons, a Liberian consul general in the United States, Worley had represented the Liberian government in a negotiated involvement of $5 million loan from the U.S., which was intended to rehab Liberia's economy following the close of World War II. After working out the details of the agreement, Worley went back to Liberia on a ship from Baltimore. Before leaving, however, he was granted an interview with a local newspaper. Worley was described in an article as the king of Liberia, a white man and obeyed by admired by leaders of Liberia. The article had, in glowing terms, uh, had uh, uh, reception waiting uh, royally on his arrival to Monrovia with a draft agreement. The article might have well been unnoticed had the, uh, the uh, uh, Liberian elite had not gotten lions taking uh, trouble copies, sending them copies of the newspapers. So in other words, the, uh, this guy Lyons sent the government of Liberia in high places copies of this article, right? And that enraged him. And so, um, uh, well, let's see, let me stop right there. Um, black people in America have been taking humiliation. You notice how Liberians aren't taking any humiliation, you know? They're like, yo, you could do that over there, but not over here. So let me finish. Uh, so anyway, he sent copies to the Secretary of the Interior and Treasury of Liberia. The publication added to the bitterness and resentment of the uh, the black African-American community in Liberia. Anti-American feelings reached a boiling point. There were several uh, there were several attempts to physically attack Americans serving in Liberia. Major Young, Bundy, and, and Mitchell even became targets of insults and threats while walking the streets of Monrovia. On May 24, 1920, Mitchell had become involved in a street fight with a Liberian who cursed him and refused to let him pass. Mitchell hit the man and the Liberian fell down. The next day, the Liberian came, police came to arrest Mitchell and sought ref, who sought refuge in American delegation residence. A messenger was sent to accompany him to the president, right? Both arrived at the president's office, but it became clear that invitation had been a strategy to get Mitchell out of the delegation residence, thus enabled his arrest. The commissioner of general was tried on the same day and fined $50 imposed on him. Uh, more of the Liberian he had attacked uh, 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 presented a sum of damage of $3,000. The whole thing was attempted to arrest and humiliate Mitchell. Worley was declared a person non, uh, non grata 
and the official letter to the U.S. government that Liberia wanted all the American advisors out and kicked all the Americans out of Liberia. That's why America hated Liberia so much, you know, this incident right here. They kicked all the Americans. America was never humiliated like this in its history. Think about that, Bumani. America goes all around the world, but Liberia kicked them out, you know? So they accused the Americans of trying to take over the country, being the first black republic in public. Any hints of paternalism was not tolerated. They rejected the loan out of pride and dignity. Liberia was a true example of black pride in the world of white supremacy. The U.S. State Department and military would have its revenge 60 years later when they financed the overthrow of the uh, Liberian government with the help of Samuel Doe and the indigenous president of the country, you know? You know, so uh, um, that that right there, most people don't even know that part of history. I had to, I, 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 I'd studied Liberia so well. That that story right there stuck out of my mind because in 1920, white people, what happened in 1920? We had uh, Rosewood, we had Tulsa, we had all the white men just do whatever they wanted. They could they could take take your body. You know, they had liberties with a black man, black woman's body in America, but in Liberia, right? any sort of hint of that shit, right? What they do? You got to go. You know, you got to go. And so bottom line is this. No other country in Africa that ever happened. No other country they ever put America or, 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 or historically have put white people in their place. And when, when you see white people in Liberia, they are very, very quiet and they very, very minor because they know this is not the country. You know, this is not the country. Nobody, nobody knows about King, whoever the King is of uh, uh, thing, Queen Elizabeth, and all this stuff like that. No one, no cares about who the fuck Winston Churchill. There's no statues of Winston Churchill here. There's no <laughs> statues of anything like that. You know, you don't find any white people statue in Liberia. And so, therefore, like I said, as far as like building in Africa, in my opinion, Liberia has to be number one. We have to salvage that history. You know, you know, as far as like the black dignity, pride. African African nationalism movement. That has to be the first country. And all these other countries will fall right in place, you know? And once we build that up and we create a permanent pipeline between the uh, diaspora and Liberia, that's what the whole thing. We want to get everybody on the same page as far as Liberia. That has to be the first country of, uh, uh, of entry. That has to be the main country for everybody and, and that, uh, that's repatriating and stuff like that, you know? Let's see. Well, that, that's it, brother. So, a serious man. So, family, I'm hoping that everybody just got a chance to listen to this incredible history broken down by the expert, you know, Color Genesis. And you're, you know, since I've known you, you've been on this, you know. And even, you know, you, you even talk about countries like uh, Angola. So, you talk about you, you talk about countries that are not mainstream to where, you know, where we just always connecting about. So, that's what we're doing, family. So, what I want to do, family, is uh, do a share screen of what we have on the site as we begin to work to build this uh, beautiful Liberia connection. I hope our brother experienced in Liberia listening to this, you uh, join us, you know, in this effort. You know, we need everybody. You know, it's time to put our, uh, uh, let's put love first and uh, ego second, you know. I'm willing to listen. You know, I don't know everything. I want all uh, all our people that's interested in building with Liberia. We got to be on one page, you know. You know, we got to be all on one page because, like I said, this right here is going to be a game changer. You know, unlike any other country in Africa and whatnot, you can uh, like experience with Liberia. He was telling us he got like four properties under his belt in Liberia. This is a country you don't have to go through all that uh, nonsense and everything. You could do basically what you want to do. You know, you don't need the citizenship. You don't need none of that. You know, all you have to do is black. You know who is a Liberian, uh, Bomani? Any black man that makes it to Liberia is a Liberian, you know? You know anybody make, uh, uh, make it to Liberia uh, is a Liberian. Anybody from the West, for, for the most part, any diasporan is a Liberian, basically, you know? You know, we got to basically, uh, 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 like I said, this is this is it. When we start bringing tours and investments and everything like that, if somebody got ideas, they want to... <laughs> Link with people on the ground. We're gonna build a whole network. You know, join our social network, the Ning site. You know, and everything. Join the Liberia chapter, and everything like that. We got all types of people that help you out with your paperwork, your legal documents, everything. You know, we got the people on the ground. You know, and so therefore we got connections with the government. We got connections with the president of Liberia. 
So we're going to do this and everything like that. So when we're situated in Liberia and everybody's situated, then we're going to build up connections with other countries far and like Liberia is going to be the place where anybody could do business with black America. You know, our goal dream is to one day have a stock exchange. You know, we're going to do that. We're going to, by, by doing, by making Liberia, by us being enthusiastic about Liberia, right? It's going to draw the sort of people with us. We need to build our own stock exchange. We need to build our own, all, everything, you know? We need our own banking system. And Liberia is a country to do it. You know, Liberia is a country to do it. All the stuff that we complain about that we need and everything like that, that's the country to do it, you know, to branch to the continent, a pipeline. Like Liberia is a logistical pipeline to the whole continent, to the whole subregion. So, therefore, culturally, you know, because it's not like you, uh, uh, if you go, I'm not going to knock any country and everything like that, but some of these countries got strong ties with Europe, you know. You go to Francophone Africa, you can't do this type of movement here. Why? Because they're so uh, in love with France, you know. Everything's French and everything, you know. You you might as well become a Frenchman. Learn French and become a Frenchman. Like yeah, during- absolutely. Just like, uh, you, know, you know, I'm one of the people that you know, love Ghana and everything, but you're limited on certain things and, uh, you know, I limit what I you know say about, you know, because, you know, we have our business and investments and things there, but you know, also been trying to just expand what we're doing because we never want to give one country the leverage. Because when we give one country the leverage, like we've done to Ghana, then next thing you know, they start tripping. So what we're doing now is leveraging the playing field to where we have several different African countries that we do an incredible work with. And I've been working on this for a while. And I'm just happy that, you know, my brother Kala you know, has been motivating me to where we can work on this. So what we're looking at there, family, is nine day tour highlights. So people may not see Liberia as this incredible country for tourism, but that's what we're doing. So brother, you see that uh, link that say nine day tour highlights. Yeah, I see it. Have you been to all them places in Liberia? Okay, I've been to uh, this, this around the city. I've been to the uh, Liberian National Museum. It wasn't open when I was there. But hopefully it's gonna be back open, you know, because of COVID. It was closed because of COVID. Uh, Capitol Hill, I've been there. Uh, University of Liberia, I've been there. I've been to the Roberts Monument, as you see, uh, thing. I don't know if you want to play that video for this show. Uh, the, uh, 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 the Roberts uh, uh, Monument. I, 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 I broke down the meaning of the, the monument, the bus underneath and everything. I've been to Bushrod Island. I've been to uh, uh, Freeport. I've been to uh, the uh, OAU Village. I've been to, uh, let's see, uh, Benson Street Masonic Temple. I did a, a preview for that, uh, the Masonic Temple. Creative Arts Center. I've been to Caesar's Beach. Oh my God, Dad, you talk about oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> you talk about fun. Oh my freaking God, man. Caesar's Beach. You're gonna. Oh my God, you're gonna have fun. That place is beautiful. You know, um, John uh, Gribbison Beach uh, too is good. You know, Caesar's Beach, John Gribbison. There's so many places. Uh, uh, I've been to um, RLJ uh, Kendasia uh, Resort uh, in uh, Painesville. You know, lodging. I've been there. I had a ball there. I did a show with, uh, uh, um, I did my show with uh, um, uh, Kinganda Channel with O'Shea from there. I had a freaking ball. You know, I went to Buchanan. There's a place called uh, uh, Sunset Beach. It's, oh, you guys see the co- the beautiful. They got these big black rocks, right? That go the coast and uh, the the coastline of Liberia is just so freaking beautiful. And when, when, when you go to uh, uh, RLJ Kandasia, what I want you to do is this. Imagine 200 years ago, our ancestors settled on this continent, built the communities like they knew in America, and, and they went from hell to a tropical paradise. You know? And they didn't miss a beat. When they built Liberia, they were like, oh, they built their own country, they were making their own money, had their own businesses and everything, they were free. Liberia was a land of free. They were so happy. This is the only time in our country where the happiness was at a, at a at a peak level. We want to recapture that. You know, as as we go, you know it's going to be a testament. African Americans doing a Pan-African tour to RLJ uh, Resort in Villas. That's going to be built by Bob Johnson. African American returned to Africa, built a resort. And we're basically, oh, man. Bro, this is revolution right here. And this is going to trigger other people to do build more resorts. It's going to trigger other people to put money in the country saying, this country ain't a war-torn country and everything. 
hey, I could put money in here. You know, I could I could invest here. I can mm-hmm. invest here. We got we got to attract you the groundswell where we got major investors in Black American and diaspora coming here to build. You know, we have to be on the ground. I think if more of us on the ground, then Rob Bob Johnson could have went further over there. You know, but we started doing tourism. Say so tourism business is going. You're going to need your own banking services. You know, mm-hmm. Mamani, right? That's going to create opportunity. You know, Absolutely. opportunity. You know, you know. The fact even Bob Johnson literally just made that move. And things like that. That's uh, you know, and you know, with us when we just make these moves, we're supporting a black-owned establishment. Exactly. You know? yeah, they, like, like I said, we're just we're doing what's natural. Like people say, "Yo, I'm not no genius. Kyle is not a genius. I'm only doing what like the, uh, Thomas Paine, common sense. Common sense. If you are African American, you know you got ancestry in that country, and you, your ancestors built that country. Why aren't you freaking taking up on it? It's just common sense. Absolutely." You know, it's just common sense, you know. Liberia is just common sense. If a black man from the West, you're common sense, you know. You want your foot in Africa, and then like I want to talk about the 16 tribes of Liberia. All right, right. The 16 tribes. You got that picture I sent you. The 16 tribes. We celebrate all the tribes of Liberia. We love them all, you know. Despite all the problems and everything, the the spirit of love and black unity is going to overcome all that stuff like that. Now you got Liberians celebrating us in Liberia. At one time, we were deadly enemies. Now you got young Liberians saying, man, bring more African-Americans over. Man, we love y'all. Come on. Come home, man. They're like, man, we need, we want more of y'all over here, man. Come on. Just come back home, man. This is this is a place. You know, come see what it's all about. And so the bottom line is we, we got young Liberians that are not tr- untribalized there. They listen to our music, listen to our culture. They listen to everything. They basically uh, uh, uh black america black diaspora on steroids you know and when you go to liberia you're gonna find uh, people you're gonna find people that's into the reggae you're gonna find people that's into uh, caribbean culture you're gonna find people matter of fact um uh Crosseville is a caribbean settlement you know in liberia you know it's a caribbean settlement you know so you got everything in working for you you know you got local people it's a black liberia is the african melting pot you know, like America was a European melting pot. You know, Liberia is a black melting pot. People from the fancy tribe in Ghana are there. People from Nigeria are there. You know, people from Ethiopia are there. They're Ethiopians there. There's every kind of black people are there. You know, it's a black mosaic. Now it's a melting pot. You know, the culture is a melting pot. It's a melting pot and a mosaic at the same time. There's this one melting pot, the Liberian culture. You know, so like I said, experience, and also, uh, brother of mine, you got to have a a, a, a drum a, a thing. You got to have a drum performance. You know, as part oh, of absolutely, tour. brother. That's how we Yo, do it, man. Roots the and Gio, the Gio <laughs> and the mono drummers, man. I, that's, I experienced that when I went to the Liberian Embassy in 2012, 10 years ago, at the embassy. That drum, the beat of those drums are so pulsating, man. The drums are like 10 feet tall, and they had the heart, man. The devil, the bush devil out there, and the guys on the book stilts, you know. They yo, they, they, yo, they, I have never heard drums like this in my life. You would never hear drums like uh, Liberian drums in your life. You know, it's gonna be pulsating. You know, it's like boom, 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 boom. boom you know what I'm saying? It's like th- you, know, you talk about African drums, man. It's like yo, I'm telling you. So we celebrate the 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 the, the culture, and we go there, man. Get all the arts and crafts, the arts and crafts and stuff like that. Like I got right here are very affordable. You know, the, 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 another thing, man. When we travel, folks. Get out of that cheap stuff. You know, get out of that cheap stuff. Get out of that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yo, you got, if you go to Africa, you're not coming back with artifacts. You ain't been in Africa. You know what I'm saying? Come back. Get your masks. Get your ornaments. Get your statues. Get your load up. Let them know that we're coming here to spend money with you. You know? You know, we're coming here to spend money. We're coming, what y'all got, man? What y'all got? You know, come over here penny pinching and, uh, <laughs> oh man, you know, stop all that mess. I hear that on YouTube all the time, you know. Oh, I'm in the market, but uh, yeah, man. I mean, come on, you arguing over 50 cents. You know, come on. So, like I said, we got like I said, we got there's a lot, a lot to the Liberian culture and uh the 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 the, the, the founding of the country, the uh the uh the, when you go up river in Liberia, right? You'll think you're in Georgia in South Carolina, you know. Right and Africa at the same time. I'm driving up uh, St. Paul River, right? You know, St. Paul, going across St. Paul Bridge, right? Get ready to go up country. 
at the same time, I'm seeing people with pickup trucks looking like Hicks, you know, pickup trucks looking like Sanford and Son and whatnot, driving around and whatnot with this stuff on it. At the same time, you see African women carrying vases on their head. You know, it's like, it's like, damn, am I in America and I'm in Africa? What the heck is going on, man? Once you go past Hotel Africa, cross over St. Paul Bridge, it's like, whoa, it's like, yo, it's like you're in America. It's like you're in Georgia and South Carolina and Africa at the same time. It's like, yo, it's like I say, it's amazing. Like I said, it's amazing. It's, it's a culture. And not, and not that. When you're there, nobody is going to tell you no. We say you want to do something, build a business, everybody, okay. No one's going to tell you you got to partner with somebody. You got to come out of your pocket. You got to do, you know what I'm saying? You know, you got to partner with somebody. You need this amount of assets and everything. No, everybody going to tell you whatever you could do, man. Hey, you know, you're helping the economy. You're helping. You're putting money into the country, man. So do it, you know? Absolutely, brother. And I appreciate um, um, all the flexibility uh, that Liberia is offering to us. And sometimes, you know, it's so many countries in Africa that sometimes we don't know the people. So, family, we're letting you know that we are focusing on Liberia because it is, um, I've taught the color for many years and things like that. And now we've been working on this, trying to get up a point to where we can just add it to the schedule and everything. And it's a lot that goes into the schedule with family. We talk about many countries in Africa, but this is the ideal country for us to literally work on building up because, you know, people talk about all these other European nations and things. So many of us that go to these nations and we give them our all. Literally, you have people from, um, from, you know, from where I'm at, from the Caribbean, to also people from the African continent. Literally, we faithfully leave our homes, our country, give up everything that we have in our own country, and we go to Europe, and we go to America, and we give a lifetime of this dedication. And then, you know, what do you have for that? You have depreciated home, depreciated car, and inflation, European investments, and you're just basically just a, a high paid slave, and you're going to give everything back to the system. So I'm telling everybody, family, we need to learn to invest our money in Africa and in nations like uh, Liberia to where we can build whatever we need to build. And family, once again, if you talk about a lot of different countries in Africa, after independence, most countries have been through it. It's what it is as a, as a situation. Whether it's the sabotage from uh, you know, their the former colonial uh, powers to so on. And you know, it's the situation end up being... If we don't commit ourselves to making these moves, we're gonna have the same situation. Like I told uh, one person uh, earlier today that if you know if I wasn't making certain moves in Africa or we were not making certain moves, then we turn around. The Chinese, the Indians, the Lebanese, the Canadians—they're buying up property, they're buying up land, they're right. all over the continent. You know, we even talk about the uh, the Chinese in Zambia or in Zambia. You know, so this is a serious situation. We've been just giving you all kind of uh, documentation. At one point, I uh, remember back in the early 2000s, there was an Africa-China conference. You know, so these things are like nonsense to where what we were looking for the African continent to do is open up to us in the diaspora. Because without the diaspora, the African continent is going nowhere. You know, so it's time for us to organize ourselves because right now in America, you turn around, you have a whole population from Mexico. Literally, they have plans in the next few years, even right now, to merge into America little by little. Yeah. Unfortunately, the wall was not completed because you have a new uh, government that decided that the wall is not important. You know, But the previous government understand that situation. And I'm not here to pick sides between two old evil white men and things like that. I'm just saying that we as the people that have built this country... If you really want to say you build this country and everything, stand your ground, build what you need to build, because we know not everyone is going to run off to the African continent. So when we build a business on the African continent, we're asking for people's support to where when we do an import export, when we're building factories and we're producing goods, you know, to where we can build be self-sufficient. We all have to work in these aspects, acts of the things. We're talking about the Caribbean islands. You're right there in West Africa, because that's the, the where we have all these incredible countries. Where is the import export and the, the, the flights and the, the boats right. or the, the right. ship from West Africa to the Caribbean islands? You're talking about we have, there is no with so much of us as black people need to connect. Uh, so we're these the only, we work on but uh, mind, we're the only race of people, right? Where everything that goes in and out of Africa is owned by Europeans, all the shipping, 
people, everything. We haven't made wool progress in 100 years. Think about it. Garvey talked about that 100 years ago, and we haven't made a damn bit of progress. Okay, but it was now, in the 1920s. Yeah, 1920. Now, what I'm saying is this, though. There's time out for that. You know, I'm going to hear no more excuses, no more back talk, anything. The bottom line is this. We need to build the global black African what? Infrastructure, you know? Black Africa, we need our own supply chain. We need our own monetary system. We need our own financial system. We need to find out. Look, we have the money, you know, but our money goes out. You got young guys building, uh, young white guys building things like Robinhood apps and everything, where they basically, you could buy stocks, you know, penny stocks and everything like that. We need the African version of that, you know, where we could put our money and invest in African startup businesses and all the content and everything. We have the capital. We don't have to go to the World Bank and IMF. You know, we could do that right ourselves. We got the technology to do it. We just don't have the mindset. You know, and that's I said. Well, while we plan out, when we plan our flag in Liberia, we're saying, look, we like I said, uh, Lee Kuan Yew once said, you know, he said Singapore don't have none of this stuff. We don't have an airport. We have it. You know, what he told his his people, build it. We don't look. Find out how to do it and do it. You know, that's that's all he said. He said do it. Same thing the Chinese did. Same thing. Say, look, just do it. Why Africans, black people, we just don't do it. We need uh, international, we need our own uh, 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 monetary uh, money, money system, we need our own cryptocurrency, we need all that shit like that on our own to finance our own infrastructure and all, everything, you know? And then how we do it, you just do it. You know, like I said, I, 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 and like when I was in Liberia, right, and, uh, and I talked about all these things, I poured my heart out and everything, they said, man, everything you're saying is exactly what we need. But people are just not doing it. And the bottom line is this, we have to make sure... That's doing it. If you want to help, help and build and everything like that, this is these these countries right here are the place to do it. And I say at Liberia because of the entry level, you know, that at Liberia when you when you plant your flag in Liberia, if you got a successful business, a manufacturing company, when you're in Liberia, you're basically on the whole entire continent. That's the beauty about it. You could be in Liberia, set up your business and everything like that because there's so many abandoned buildings and stuff like that that for sale and everything. You have a manufacturing, you you're manufacturing and everything like that. You import, you bring your 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 thing. You say you want to, uh, uh, you got your product that you want to be distributed throughout uh, the region, and everything like that. That can all happen. And so, therefore, well, that's that's what we need. We need people to to do these things. Why? Because I just found out tonight that Ghana is importing all its rice from the Lebanese, and so is Liberia. Now, my brother Armstrong Jabba, he's building, he's he's producing Liberia grown rice right now for the market. And hopefully we're going to connect with that brother one night, you know? Why is Ghana importing rice when it has all that fertile land? You know? Why is the Vietnamese and the Lebanese and all that importing, and India is importing rice into West Africa? What are we, stupid? And said, well, what am I going to get into? All that. Hey, yeah, is that, uh, is that uh, experience in Liberia? What's going on, brother? Yeah. What's going on, fellas? Thank you for having me on here. Big ups to you guys. You guys are doing a marvelous job. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, man. I'm excited for this time, what y'all are doing. I give a noise in the background, you know, but I appreciate it. It's all good. Yeah. Well, absolutely, brother. We, uh, we can hear you loud and clear. I appreciate you, and I've been watching some of your videos online and everything, and we're trying to put all this thing, thing and energy together because what we're looking to do is there's some African countries out there that literally just feel like they're the cream of the crop and that, you know, they're going to do whatever uh, what they need to do to where they just discourage the rest of us to do certain things. So mm -hmm. we're just basically letting people know that there is more than one African country because at one point, I'm being honest with you, Ghana was that country. And, you know, I love Ghana. I got business uh, establishment. I got my whole cool staff and a whole lot of things going on there. But we have to literally just diversify and create a leverage because what we're looking at is repatriation. So you're talking about the African diaspora, it's a whole lot of us. So we can't all fit in one country. I mean, we can to a point, uh, but the goal is to this where we just make our way around different parts of Africa to where we can literally just work input, export. You know, we're building a factory in this country and another factory in that country, and we're trading and things like that. So this is the way we just um, be literally uh, self-sufficient and we need, one of the things I realized in my research uh, at one point, when I looked at all the different African <coughs> countries, all of their partners are European partners. So I'm like, well, where's the connection between this country and that country and things like that? But 
it does take us as the people you know, from the grassroots to just show heart and fight and just put it together. So, you know, I appreciate Brother Kala because he's one of the people that's been telling us about countries like uh, the Liberia and Angola, countries that we just really don't you know, like we just like under the radar. But realistically, if we don't do this thing, then one country is going to feel like they just got it like that to where they can come up with vax mandate, come up with $150 COVID uh, te uh, rapid tests and all kind of foolishness and literally just destroy their economy. But if we, we do this to where we have like 10 countries ready for repatriation, that's competition and that's also leverage. Yes. So, brother, uh, experience Liberia, you know, share what you think about all these things. I think that you, you, you guys are on point with that. You definitely are on point. Just like you said, you can't just uh, target just Ghana. You have to look at other countries that's there. And uh, and for us to come from the diaspora with the knowledge and expertise that we have, that has the same mindset that want to come and create uh, better opportunities for the uh, people on the continent. And it's going to take that effort. I was just saying that on, on, um, on Dinah's show, man, is that why is it that if, if these uh, African countries can invest into foreign countries, you should be first trying to connect with your brothers that's on ground? I don't know what they got in place, but they're not doing a, a very good job because you got to look at China's coming in, uh, uh, Lebanese is coming in. So we, they can't say that money is not there, you know? So they're, they're maintaining businesses. They're yeah, taking, uh, Lebanese, people. the brother. Lebanese, right? Uh, the Lebanon doesn't produce. Le Lebanon is a shithole, right? Don't produce nothing. <laughs> it makes oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Lebanon's a freaking shithole, hell on earth. They got war and some of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They got their, they, they, they're so big and bad. You know, I'm like, come on, Beirut, come on, man, get out of here, mm -hmm. you know. And they come in to Liberia and Sierra Leone running shit, man, because. It's just un unbelievable because when it's not organized, we got to get organized. We got to be on the same page, man. All of us got to be on the same page. Exactly. We got to be on like, the same page. I, I looked at the, how they have you. You've been there, Kyle. You've seen all the city builders. I'm like, they got our friend. They got the market sold. Yeah. I'm like, Eagle. I'm like, man, I said, where's the brothers at? Where's the sisters at? And, it's, and, and it, we have to clean house. And that's, the, and that's the only thing about it is you have to clean house because is no more, and this is what's really hurting the, the, the countries, man, is that they're selling the people out to be buddy-buddy with these other nations that does not care. It's the same thing that we deal with in America. They right. come to our neighborhoods and they take the money out and we left stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have yeah. anything, but we're the number one consumers. You know what I'm saying? It's time for us to stop being the consumer and start like, okay, you want yeah. to use us? Okay, you want this? You're going to pay for it. You know what I'm saying? We're going to leverage. Right. The whole thing, it has the whole thing about uh, uh, the black race is this, right? We're like crabs in a barrel. I, mean, I hate saying that the term crabs in a barrel, but it's true. If you see, if, mm -hmm. we would rather see somebody who don't look like us succeed, right? Because it's like, I ain't let that nigga. I'm going to tell you a story, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you a story, right? It's a, fa a family history, right? My grandfather uh, uh, was one of the first blacks to move uh, in South Jamaica, Queens, right? Back in the 60s, right? Yeah. Every black people got loans when my grandfather worked in Carnets and everything. The whole neighborhood, South Glassboro, Philo, with nothing but black. White people moved out to Long Island. Black people moved in, right? Everything's out there. All these people come from Harlem. Black people come from Harlem. They come from the South, the Caribbean, everything. It was a black community, Mecca, black people, South Jamaica, Queens, like, like that. Anyway, my grandfather had a good job at Con Edison, right? Good money, right? He had bought his house and everything like that, you know, kids and everything, right? And so anyway, uh, he would go out to Freeport, Long Island, right, and buy crabs and uh, fish and buckets of crabs and everything. And basically, he was fishing and everything and selling them in the neighborhood. It's a part, little side hustle thing, right? But one day, he knocked on one of his neighbor's door, right? And he said, the guy was always, hey, how you doing? And all of a sudden, the guy was like, uh, he go, uh, I guess he worked in the sanitation department or whatever. He says, I'm Mr. Speller. Don't you know me? He goes, yeah. He goes, he goes, uh, he goes, you doing what? He goes, uh, what happened to your job? He goes, I still got it, but I do the side. He goes, he goes, uh, 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 yeah, I, I'm going to keep you there, too. He goes, I live right back. Yeah, I'm going to keep you there, too. You ain't going to move out of this neighborhood on me. We're not buying some fish from you or not, you know? You, you, you know what I'm saying? That's just doing a little too much. So my grandfather was like, yo, that was like a side thing. He said, yo, look, I, this is just something I do on the side. I, I make extra money 
uh, uh, going down there and uh, uh, fishing uh, in Freeport, bringing back crabs. When I remember one time, my grandfather brought some crabs back home, whatnot, you know, and a crab was out. And I was like, man, this little thing chasing me around the backyard. <laughs> But the guy was like, yo, man, it, it was crabs in a barrel. You try to do something, everybody like, yeah, hey, you you ain't moving out, of, you ain't moving out of here on me. You know, you you gonna stay right where you are. I'm gonna keep you there. You gonna stay right where you are. But that's the whole thing. Everybody, we don't like to see other black people get ahead. I mean, my grandpa was working class, right? He had a good job and everything, but he wanted his next generation. We're gonna be the professional class. I'm I'm sort of like I'm professional now. I'm like living out what my grandpa and father couldn't do. You know, they're working class men. You know, but the whole thing is we have never accepted black ownership and black power and everything. So therefore, it's easy like uh, to see a Chinese man open up a grocery store in your neighborhood than see a black man. You know, because it's like okay, the Chinese well yeah. yeah. You know, okay, you know, but the black man opened up a grocery store. I was like, oh man, y'all, y'all niggas think y'all, you, who you think y'all are? You know, mm-hmm. you think you're better than us. Well, that's that mentality that we have, you know, in our community. You know, it's a mentality. It's, it's, it's in Africa too. You know, they don't, people don't say nothing about the Lebanese, but they'll talk about the Congo people, the American Liberians, blah, blah, blah. Well, the Lebanese are robbing y'all fucking blind, you know? Let me share this. Out of the country, you know? Let me, let me share this, Carla. So, uh, you know, we, we got a little a little shop where we sell rice and stuff like that. So uh, our manager went to go buy some more rice to, to restock. And so, of course, we had to buy the rice from Lebanese. Y'all listen you know, to that. Yeah. When we go down there, well, when she goes down there to get the rice, now get this now, they were saying that in order to get the rice, they had to buy biscuits and other things. And I was like, what? I was like, where in the world do you do that at? You going I'll come to get one specific product, and now you're gonna tell me in order to get this product, I am forced to buy biscuits. And now the Lebanese, the Lebanese doing that? Yeah. Wow. wow. So I was like, so I, I reached out to one of my, my friends, the, the reporter. He's like, yeah, man, that's what they be doing because you know they got uh, to where they are uh, the they can control the market or do whatever they needs to be done. I'm like, that's the problem. You're not allowing other people to come in and put pressure on them. Now you're, you're forced to, to come down and you got competition and it makes it fair. But when you're there, you got the monopoly on the whole thing. You can do whatever you want. But it was hey, yo, have, was you, have you met Armstrong Jabba? That, have you met Armstrong Jabba yet? No, I have not. Okay, Armstrong Jabba is, is, a, is a Liberian. This guy's growing rice. He's, he his rice is on the Liberian market right now. You know, Liberian made rice. He's growing. Oh, rice. Okay. I take that live. I take that live back. Yes, yes, yes. I spoke to him. He's down in Louisiana. Okay, Armstrong. Armstrong Jabba. Right, you know? right, 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 right. That right, brother right, right. right there. I can't wait to hook up with him, man. Mm-hmm. And the bottom line is, I'm trying to get some Angola investors to invest in him. You know, mm-hmm. I'm gonna try to get my Angola partners to invest in him. Yo, the bottom line that that brother right there. Onions. No one ever thought like you could grow Liberia. You could grow anything in Liberia. He got you onions. Grow. Grow. It's fertile. It's fertile. It's fertile, it's fertile man. man. Year round. Year round. You could grow year round in Liberia and whatnot. You know. So they grow rice year round. And mm-hmm. so, bottom line, my goal, my goal, our goal, it should be we're gonna make sure that Liberian rice is on every market in West Africa. You know, and then bring it back, bring it, ship some to the United States and everything. You know. Right. So the bottom line, we don't, we don't have to freaking let the Lebanese that we do that. It, it, what gets me is. He's not really getting support in the country, you know. He's doing that on his own, you know. Exactly. That's sad. I don't know what it is. People don't want to see other Liberians. I thought we were bad, you know. You know, I thought we were crabs in the barrel in America, but goddamn, I said my yeah. Liberian myself right say, "Yo, y'all got I said, "Look, why is it that I'm as an African American bringing all y'all Liberians together? Y'all should already be together when I come, you know." Mm-hmm. I gotta put like I gotta force Liberians together sometimes, you know, like yo, come on, you know. Work together, man. Y'all one we one well, team is team Liberia, but, you know. But right, but you but you see, but you see, Carla, and this is why I say we have to look at it because like I was saying before, when you look at the demographics of us and all these places where they, where the slaves were at, like you know, over in Brazil, dog on the Caribbean islands, all that, that's that mentality that's been inherited in us and, and it's and, and they scattered over, and it scattered over into Africa because of the oppression was going in by the European having a foothold, 
and, and putting a puppet in place to run the government and, and say, hey, look, as long as you give us what we want and uh, you do whatever, you know, and, it, and, and that what creates that environment. Yeah, they create exactly. that environment, but we never had that mentality. You see, because think about it before segregation, or before desegregation, we had those buildings. We had yeah, those we had that. We, we, we was hey, we was on it. We was on it. We was doing what needed to be done. But as soon as that that uh, they desegregated, oh, I'm going over here. That ice is colder. Yeah, the bottom line, what it is is this. The bottom line is this, like I said, yo, look, I, I that was nice all oh, right there, but I'm I'm in that white I'm I'm in the white folks part of town. I could go there, and that was a status symbol, status symbol. We we can go to the white the white brand sit back laughing and whatnot, you know. And so we, we said, uh, what we what we could what we should have did what, what should have happened was this. All those black business businesses should have got enterprise zones to upgrade them so they look just as good as the white area. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, right. we that never happened. You know, so we never there no one ever brought the whole bag. Like, ah, that was good for a time and everything like that. But once you go into that supermarket with an air conditioner and that uh the the sliding door open, the automatic door open, that was a new thing back then. You know, <laughs> the right. automatic door open. That was a wrap, man. Black people were like, uh, yeah, that was and good. Then, that was, and the thing, a, on the flip side of that too, I mean, cut you off. On the flip side of that too, uh, when they start receiving their black businesses, white Europeans, they say, "Wow, hey, our markup just shot up." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Our percentage, our profit rate just shot up. So we can we can't afford to let them go and establish their own businesses and stuff like that. Oh, they got to keep them. Have you ever seen, hey, brother, have you ever seen that uh, that documentary of made 1954? How to sell to the Negro? No, no, I haven't. Okay, seen, I so, uh, it's on. It's on YouTube. Uh, How to sell to the Negro. It's made in 1954, and they said like this. They said, "Look, we have a a, a market, 25 billion dollars worth of consumer, right inside of our country. Right? These mm -hmm. the Negro in America, they buy the finest stuff. They like their brand or not. And we said we overall, they said they got more money than any other group of people because our money is not invested in anything. It's just spent." It said mm -hmm. sell it to the Negro. I said, and so you had white businesses, right? Who said, you know something, right? I don't give a shit about these black people and everything, but you know, I want their dollars. You know, that's why right. I, that's why these segregates came, not because they loved us, a obligation. Mm -hmm. They knew that we they wanted our money, you know, as simple as that. Yep. It had nothing to do with any, uh, 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 the righteous cause of desegregation. No, it was all about the money. Let me see if I can find that. Let's see. Selling to the Negro. And, and what should have woke us up is when uh, the bus boycott, man, and that when we hurt them yeah. in the pocket, we we got to use this that same strategy will work today. It'll work yeah, today. It will work thing. today. Mm -hmm. Think about that. You know what I'm saying? If you stop buying that Gucci and Prada, because we got some man, they, they still our, our our things anyway. They still mm -hmm. our designs. They still everything that we have. They still but our, they, couldn't, they couldn't survive. They could not survive, got, man. Coaching they, right? they, they, they leeches. They they have to get attached. You think about it, from from the music industry on down, yeah. from the, the the entertainment, from uh, uh, movies to the, the the athletes. They have to the beats, to everything like that. They're they're trying to get into Afro beats now too. Yeah. The bottom line, wow. you got you got. This is a sad part. This is a sad commentary. Everything. Black girls make these new dances on TikTok, right? But it's the little white girls that be getting the viral videos off of it, making it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They get they they make these that white girls go out and do it when they oh it's uh, black girls do it okay yeah well as soon as the, as soon as the white girls do it then next thing you know they got a billion views and everything like that they're making the money off of it they're getting invited to these uh, stuff like that and the black people creators don't even get an acknowledgement for any stuff they create so right. that's that's what it is when you live in a, a, a country as a minority you're just like Dr. Alan Clarence said you're just a loser. Because they're gonna smother you. I put that link for the uh, um, uh, 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 I think it's, I hope that worked. The link for the uh, uh, how to sell to the Negro. You know, okay, I'm gonna, you. yeah, I'm gonna get that. Yeah, how to sell to the Negro. That 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 right there was in 1954. By 20 years, by 1974, man, the, the thing was complete. We were shopping on Madison Avenue and and all this stuff like that. You know, um, mm -hmm. fancy hats and everything like that. Our grandmothers and everybody used to wear. And everything, these nice uh, uh, suede stuff and everything. And the thing is, they furniture. They was there was an old uh, uh, um, racist senator, um, 
uh, what's his name? Gold, Goldman, what his name is? Uh, Barry Goldwater said, mm-hmm. uh, he said a joke. He says, he goes, uh, something, let me say the joke. He said, he goes, I, uh, uh, uh he said, he, uh, what do you get with a Jew? So a Jew. And he goes, all you have a Jew is some, uh, some, uh, fancy furniture and that color boy's phone number. Mm-hmm. You know, in other words, Jews were, uh, uh, were notorious for, uh, and uh, for uh, uh, buying furniture on time, you know, that's where we had the water bed and uh, uh-huh. these silk suede suits. But black, you know, but they made millions off of us, uh, catered to our whim, you know, the uh, what's it, uh, suede leather, uh, uh, interior, and whatnot, you know. Uh, then they gave us our own malt liquor, you know, everything. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know for years when I grew up, I thought malt liquor was black on that's that's white people would say. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I said, yo, the way black people talk about St. Ives on that, I thought I was black on that's white on that, you know? Yeah, I remember yeah. the days. I remember yeah. the days. <laughs> yeah, St. Ives on that, you know? It, it, it impacted the culture hard, man, because they had, they went out there and they recruited those, those rap artists to promote it, right. and it was doing Billy damage Williams in the neighborhood. Yeah. It was doing and, damage and, in the neighborhood. Uh, uh, it was strong. Newport cigarettes, right? I thought Newport cigarettes yeah. was black on, man, you know? But none of that stuff is healthy for you. All that stuff is poison and d- damage and destruction. <laughs> yeah, you know I said the bottom line, but Newport cigarettes, you can't get rid of Newport cigarettes out of a black magazine. That's a, it's one thing that will always advertise in a black magazine. You can't get nothing else in the, the advertising black magazine, but Newport cigarettes will always be there. You know, that's why every magazine, all of them, Newports, you know, Newports 100s and whatnot, you know. And so yeah. that's what I said, man. The bottom line is they know how to market to us when they did the billboards. They said the biggest way to market black people is set up a bill, even though the dark and lovely. You remember dark and lovely? Uh, that, right. that your, your sister and I sister we used to wear back in there, but that was white owned. I didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. You know, dark and lovely was freaking white owned, man. I'm like, damn, they they, they yo, they they no, the, they took billions from us, man. Billions. Like I told Bamani to start the show, man. You think they're gonna let us have Africa without a fight? No. That's the that's the ultimate prize. I always said that. I said, man, I said, I said, look, I said, we need to wake up and we need to start focusing in on going back and strategically build up Africa because this is what they're going for. Look at China. China did not infiltrate or move their way in there. You know what I'm saying? And and they they putting they, they little armies. I don't even know how they bringing their own police over there and doing what they're doing. This is ridiculous. But it's just ridiculous. That's, that's ridiculous. You because know what I'm saying? We'll how do you allow someone to come in your country where you are the host nation and they're bringing their own police? And you're Not the majority, but police to police their communities that they got their little section. No, you can't do that in China. Why would you allow it to happen there? And this is the thing. We don't respect our, 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 ourselves. So they don't respect us. You see what so I'm saying? That's, that's why that's why this this sort of talking right here and the black conscious movement, like I said, it started the show. Before you could be a pan-African, you got to have black consciousness, you know? You got to have black consciousness. It can't be just anything goes and we, we just call it pan-African. No, 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 no. It's black consciousness, you know? A European, Af- Asian, what I don't have no business in Africa and whatnot, and staying long term. These, these guys are hunkering down. They're getting comfortable. These oh, motherfuckers yeah. are getting comfortable. Oh, yeah. You know, and did you see the one video with the, the thing picture where the Chinese guy was following the African girl's breast, you know, in Zambia? Had his picture, had his hands on her, breast, her naked breast and whatnot, you know? And whatnot, a couple of years, like two or three years ago. I was fucking so enraged at that shit, you know? Because you know, they it, go, wouldn't let, it wouldn't even happen in China. Would not happen in China, you know. Would not happen in China, you know. The bottom line, you don't, it don't happen, you know. But the black rate, black men, we're so weak, we don't know how to freaking fight ourselves when because we don't know who we are, you know. Mm-hmm. And we're, they, they use this thing about being racist. You're being right. Ra- no, the bottom line is this: if I'm in my own home, right, and I'm protecting my home, that's not being racist. Right. Being like Malcolm X said, that's just that's just intelligence. He didn't said. You know, he said, like, we say, are you being violent? No, he said, that's just intelligence. Mm-hmm. You know, the basic intelligence is you protect your own land mm-hmm. and everything, like, your land is your land. But they yeah. go, now they're trying to rewrite Africa, talking about we all came from Africa. No, we didn't all they come from no goddamn Africa. I hate what Africa said. Old man concrete. No, we didn't. You knew, Africans, the Europeans didn't spawn from us, you know? I don't, I don't believe that lie. That's an attempt to fucking justify them being on the mm-hmm. continent. That, yeah, we're all Africans anyway. When I, it, why it, are the real Africans trying to t- trying to take trying to take shit from us or whatnot? Why are you sitting there in the lap of sitting there 
in a baby in a, in a, a thing sitting there with African women having sex with African women. Suddenly we're all Africans now, you know. Mm-hmm. Suddenly we're all Africans. When you go to Europe, where you cover, they covered their this shit in Europe, you know. You, you know what I'm saying? They cover. We still, as a forty years, don't feel like we're Americans. When after all the shit we've done for America, we still don't feel like we're Americans. But suddenly they can just get up and say, you know something, we're all Africans now. So just don't worry about it now. We're all no, it don't work like that. You know. Let me, let me let me point this out. Let me point this out to you. Right. I was looking at my son. He was filling out an application, and I don't know if they got that over there, money, but uh, it actually about the ethnicity, and it started off. It says. Black or African American. Now it says black that belong to a racial group over in Africa, right? Now, when you look at everybody else, it was it was says the original people or having some or some ties to the original people of Europe. And uh, for uh, for the uh, the white man, it says uh, original tie original people from Europe, North Africa, and some part of uh, of Asia or something like that, right? And you do the same thing all the way down, and then it, it has the Mexican the same way as the black people. Now I said to myself, I said, now first of all, if you go back to the history books, we are the original man. We already know scientifically speaking that the white man came from us because you cannot get black from white. It's just a scientific fact because of the, their the recessive uh, trait. Yeah, but they, but they but they originated in Europe. They didn't originate in Africa. <laughs> I, I know this, and yeah. so and and then this is the thing we need to call them out on when they put shit out there like that. You know what I'm saying? For you are what happened to us? Why we can't be considered the original people? Why we had to be a part of a racial group? You know what I'm saying? I, I, I was sending it to you. I was sending. I was. I was. I was. I was. I was sending. I was, send it, I was trying to send it to you guys so you can see it. And this is the hypocrisy that we're talking about here. You know. And then you go in there and you make all these claims like you did this, and then you try to separate a uh, on, on, on North Africa away like you're European. No, it's Africa. And before you came in and colonized and took over, the original man was a, 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 a heavy, heavy melanation. He was dark. Yeah, what do you call the uh, Europeans? The, the, see, you gotta say something. Europeans created the, the term race and everything mm-hmm. like that. So like I said, I, I embrace it now, right? It's a, it's all depends on what, what what you mean what, when Europeans what, to their convenience, right? Now, oh, yeah. Anwar Sadat, when you look at Anwar Sadat, what does he look like? A black man, right? Anwar Sadat. Oh, yeah. right. But when I was in school, right, I was told that he wasn't a black man, even though he looked like my Uncle Albert, right? He wasn't a black man all of a sudden. He was an Arab, you know? Why? Because he was in Egypt. He was, you can't have black people in any place of significance, right? So he's uh, Egyptian. He's white and, uh, and everything like that, you know? So it all it all changed on what fits the white supremacy narrative, right? If somebody does something spectacular in history, suddenly they're not black anymore. Let me give you an example about Liberia, right? Do you know when uh, I, I call this one guy, this white guy out of uh, this? He like he was a Liberian enthusiast. No, but I can't stand these white people go to Liberia, right? He started looking. Look at this beautiful southern architecture. And he was talking about the the uh, the um, the Cheeseman Building in uh, Edina, right? He said, look at this Southern architect, Southern American architect, Southern American, Southern American, right? And I said, dude, what are you talking about Southern American? Why are you talking about uh, 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 caper for Southern America? Why are you doing that now? Why are you trying to appropriate Southern American history with Liberia? Why can't you say that's African American culture? Because if you look at the architecture of Liberia, right? The mm-hmm. architecture is similar to the black architecture in the Carolinas and stuff like that. You know, white people and black built homes differently. We always had the front porch, you know, mm-hmm. and we had the bullet-shaped homes and that. We had our homes on stilts, you know, on stilts, on stilts, mm-hmm. all, because of the, of the terrain, you know, especially the dismal swamp area, you know, and the, the, the wet areas of the eastern Carolinas, right? So we built that sort of architecture in Liberia, right? We brought that same architecture, same sort of houses. You go to Forksville, Liberia, you would think you was in a rural part of, uh, 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 look at old pictures from the old south and whatnot, the same exact thing. But because they built nice stone temples and buildings and churches and everything, they don't want to give us the credit saying these 
former African-American slaves came there and built the architecture. And they modified some of the architecture in Liberia. They attempted to erase. They, see, any, when you do something good, they want to Americanize it. That's why they call them the American Liberia. Even though there's never, in all my research of years, no one's ever called themselves American Liberians. American Liberians attempt to, for white America to take credit for whatever civilization came out of Liberia. Even though most people in Liberia never referred themselves as American Liberians, right? That was something the West put on. I defy anybody to show me anywhere where somebody said the term American Liberian. That's something the, the Western media put on, this, uh, uh, described them as. Why? Because when you have a government, when you have law and order, when you have a military, and you're doing good, you have you cannot attribute that to Africa or being black. Right. You got to attribute that to these people coming from a Western culture and everything, you know, a Western civilization, Western stuff like that. No, Liberia was a duplication of the black civilization that was already in, in America. You know, they came, they they black people in America had we had our own townships even in the 1800s in America. You know, we had all time. Like I said, in Arlington, uh, uh, the Arlington settlement with the Hogarth family. Have you met the Hogarth family? Uh, uh, person? No, no, I haven't met yeah, Elvis. Oh, you should meet Elvis Hogarth. You know, I met him over the summer, right? And uh, my brother Anthony Barclay Moore, he's a Liberian historian, like a historian, <laughs> and he's the founder of the Liberian Historical Preservation Society. Somebody we definitely all got to meet and get involved with. You know, I was one of the founding members. You know, mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, the Arlington, uh, right there in Virginia, right in Virginia Beach and uh, uh, Pongo area, the, the Hogarth family settled in Arlington, uh, settled in Liberia and created the Arlington uh, settlement, you know, in Liberia. Now, it looked just like the towns you saw in the Dismal Swamp area of North Carolina, Elizabeth City, and stuff like that. Black people had their own township, Weeksville, and everything like that. All they did was went to Liberia and duplicated what they already knew. You know, mm -hmm. these were black communities that were basically runaway slaves and maroon communities. They were maroon communities in the South, you know? And so mm -hmm. all they did was say, you know something, we're tired of running. Let's go to Liberia and build a community, you know? But your white people want to take credit for that, you know? We want to take credit for that. They can't even let us have one place on the earth to say, you know something? That country was built by black people. Black people, let's leave it alone. They want to put inject themselves in the Liberia history so bad. You got white Americans going over. I know you've seen them. You know they're over there. Oh, yeah. They're over there trying to uh, 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 over Liberia. America ignored Liberia through its eyes history. America is responsible for most of the problems in Liberia, but yeah, it wants to go over there and act like they have some relationship with Liberia. America, Liberia always hated America. In fact, if you look at all the European countries, right? You know, Liberia was more closer to Germany than it was America. You know, know yeah, oh yeah, Germany. Germany helped Liberia a lot. Germany built a port in Sino, you know, and it, it reluctantly, Liberia had to declare war on Germany twice. Liberia didn't want to do it. Germany was helping Liberia build inf its infrastructure. It wasn't the United States. Mm -hmm. And then what happened was the United States forced Liberia to declare war on Germany, and German U boats uh, bombed Monrovia, you know, bombed Monrovia, you mm -hmm. know, during World War One. And then after World War II, here we go again. Germany had was, uh, was helping Liberia and everything like that. And then the United States and Britain told the uh, thing that uh, uh, stop. And Liberia had to uh, uh, capitulate because Britain was trying to colonize Liberia anyway. So it had no choice but to tell the Germans you had to leave and everything. But after the war, it was the Germans that helped build, built, brought the first, the largest investment in black African history. That was the opening of the Bong Mines. I'm going to talk about the opening of the Bong Mines. The Bong Mines are the largest investment in a black country. The first invest, large investment in life. But let me give you a background. Nigeria couldn't get any, any sort of significant investment, even when they discovered oil in Nigeria. The Nigerians uh, or the U.S. oil companies were drilling on platforms, never even entered the country. They just stayed in the platforms and just said, hey, this is what we took. Ghana, Kwame Kumar could not get an investment in his bauxite, you know. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, Liberia, because it was a stable country for 100 years, right, was able to broker the Bong Mines. Bong Mines is the largest investment, the largest project on the continent, you know, wow. in iron ore in, uh, in, in Bong County. They built a railway to the interior and everything like that. Matter of fact, I got a, I got a, I'll put a video up, let's see. I got I got a blog on the Ning site on the Bong Mines, but I'm just gonna put the video. I got a blog uh, thing, the Bong Mines. Let me see. 
Okay, the beginning of the bong mines. You know, all these videos that I'm putting up here, I suggest y'all y'all brothers uh um uh uh uh, watch the stuff, you know, take this stuff down, bookmark it, you know. Very educational. Let me put it in there. Yes, Brother Kala, um, you have been extraordinary and I appreciate you just really just breaking down the foundation. And we, family, we're going to do a lot more of this. And I know we're supposed to really talk more about the tour, but the most important thing that we talk about was the history, the culture, and the foundation. We can always talk about tours and you can always visit, visit our website, but it's important that our brother break down what he's been breaking down. So yeah, okay. Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, Anthony uh, Ali asked about James Cement. James Cement, that book he wrote about Liberia was blasphemy. It was pornography. He basically made the Liberians out to be this American, stuff like that. He basically, and he had to recant that book, that that book wasn't, was garbage. You know, he didn't do his research. He never been to Liberia and everything. He never did his re proper research. He created this American Liberians and everything. That's basically a white man's version of what he thinks the country is. You automatically got to feel that uh, they're Americanized. Right? Even though a Liberian never had any really cultural connection with America, unsized Black America. The only connection between America and Liberia was Black America. You know, there was nothing between America, uh, a thing like that. Black America, would you say what Liberia was? Black American 19th century culture. You know, it wasn't white culture. It was Black American culture. But anytime when people have, when, like now, wh why is it that when you see black people going to church and everything like that, right? What do you call it? Nigger town. Oh, you're going to nigger town, right? Oh, wow. That's what white people say, right? But when it's in Liberia, suddenly, oh, see how westernized they are. You know, look at them. You know, they're westernized. They're, they have churches. They're, 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 they're so white. They're so westernized. But with the same black people in America, you you segregate them and say you don't want them. You know what I'm saying? That's the hypocrisy. You're only white when it's convenient to you. And so um, the natives could hold power. The president of the vice president under President Howard was a native librarian. That's another lie. You know, native librarians were in office in Liberia since the founding of the country. And matter of fact, the two most prominent families, the Masakoys and the Johnson families, right? Married the Johnson, uh, the Masakoys are Vive people, and the uh, Johnson's are American librarian, whatever you call them, right? And I, my girl Sine, right? She's a mixture of both of them, you know. The, the, the his, right. I, so I know the Masakoys were the most educated, most powerful family in Liberia. They were indigenous, you know. They're the ones who broke with the the bong mines, you know. They were had large connections to Germany, and so this idea that native Liberians weren't doing nothing and everything is a lie. It's a lie. Well, I appreciate you breaking that down because a lot of us have been fed that that uh, our people were at it and they hated each other and then. A bunch of different things like black people from America came there to colonize the, the native people. I, I mean, there's so many just misconceptions. So, brother, I really appreciate you just breaking it down because a lot of times we don't do our own research. We just go by what uh, our enemies tell us. Yep. And the enemies of Liberia are the enemies of black America. Don't want right. to see it. They, they want to see this erased from history. How dare you as a black country never be colonized and whatnot, you know, and everything, you know. I do have a book on like burying history, right? You know, Anthony Ali, if you've been listening, instead of uh, running your mouth all the time on uh, <laughs> me around, place, order my book on Amazon, Journey to the Promised Land. You know, well, I got it upside down, uh, got it upside down. Sorry about that. You know, Journey to the Promised Land. You know, ordering on Amazon. You know, ordering on Amazon. You want to know about that? Yeah, I did my homework. Did I know people like you? Come on, Google Library. This is historic library right here. You know, order my book. You want to learn something, you know what I'm saying? That's not fiction. It's a it's historical fiction, you know? The Azor, the, the, the exodus of 1878 was a true story. All I did was fictionalize it, you know? But all the, all the thing, everything that happened in the novel happened in real life. All I gave it was a fictitious character, you know? Try again, you know? Try again. Sorry, Anthony. I'm sorry. You know, nice try, though. So, so, so bottom line is this, uh, 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 so the bottom line, that's, that's what it is. There's a lot, like, like I, I said, the books, uh, um, one uh, book is on African shores, Maryland in Africa. Another good book. The book is like, yo big. I got this book. It's like, yo thick, you know, Maryland in Africa, you know, and then there's another book, uh, uh, with, uh, called, uh, R.L. Anderson called Liberia's America's Africa friend in, uh, published in 1953. 
That's another book. There's another book called Behold the Promised Land. You know, that's another book. There's a lot of book, good books on Liberia, you know. And there was another this white guy that wrote, uh, the, the only, Liberia's really only friend in the world was this guy named Frederick Starr, right? He wrote, uh, uh, like, because the British were trying to undermine Liberia, they would, go, show, they would say up to Liberia's curse and curse it as a nigger republic and whatnot, you know. You know, the, the British Navy would sail past the coast making threats and whatnot. Frederick Starr said, man, this is an honorable country. They're doing everything right. And the British want to mock them and, and colonize them, you know? You know, so Frederick Starr, he's another one that wrote a lot of, lot of good books on Liberia. So uh, this, yeah, that's it. Journey to the Promised Land. Voyage of the Bark Azor. Yes, Brother Kala, you know, this um, beautiful man. I mean, I've never heard anybody that's break down that foundational history. I mean, we're talking about one of the key countries in Africa where, you know, we started making our reconnection. And it seemed like people don't forgot about Liberia. So I appreciate you just re-educating us as a people. And then, you know, I'm in this uh, journey because, you know, I'm all about connecting the country. Before people even know about countries like Ghana and uh, uh, Senegal and Gambia, you know, people like myself was out there as pioneers doing field research and doing documentaries and putting this stuff out there and things like that. And now we just literally just like, okay, as families really create 10 beautiful countries in Africa to where we can just repatriate and build an energy because the diaspora is very important for that connection. So the, and the building our own building our own community. We call it the Africa Stand Project. You know, building our own communities where we could be self sufficient on the continent. We can add value to the continent. You know, because the more more, more energy we put on the continent and everything, the more infrastructure we build on the continent, the more Africa is going to benefit. You know, and that's Absolutely. what we, Chinese do it. They got Chinatowns all over the world. You know, and they're globally connected. We need to do the same thing in Africa. We need to build our own communities, build our families, build homes, build uh, 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 farms, infrastructure, industries, everything like that, and settlements. You know, we need to build on the continent, you know, so we could intermarry and uh, and uh, be back with uh, Africans and everything and have a pipeline to America. You know, we're in a good position. We're here. We're, we are found. We're, we're ingrained in America. We got... Black people control major things like the state of Georgia. Black people about to take over the state of Georgia, you know, in many ways, in freaking South Carolina and everything like that. Why are we using this power for our own benefit? We sit on pen boards of pension funds. We can have billions of dollars flow into the African continent and sister city projects, you know, finding funding uh, municipal bonds in Africa. You know, Africa should not have to go to Europe for money. We could finance Africa's development, you know. Absolutely, brother. And that's uh, that's yeah. the goal. And that's what we're doing, people. So family, um, what I want to do, we, you know, we're getting uh, into it. Um, we definitely have to con continue on another day and uh, go more into it. And uh, family, you know, we're going to keep doing this. It's, it's late at night, man. We're getting late. Now I got to go smoke right. my cigar, man. I know Bamani's tired. You know what he got to do. You know. All <laughs> right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you, All right, brother. brother experience Absolutely, that. family. I appreciate everybody uh, sticking with us. But uh, we just wanted to do this as a foundation. That way we just literally let people know that we're making this move serious, you know. We already have our brothers in uh, Sierra Leone working at Energy, and we're going to connect those two most historical countries yeah, in Africa. Yeah, like like Sierra Leone, man. Sierra Leone. So people, yeah. forget about the stress of the Civil War and all the things you hear. All countries in Africa have been through it and things like that. So now, after that, it's about building, rebuilding. So now, instead of us talking about these other um, you know, people that are brothers and having tribal European wars and things like that, Let's focus on what we need to focus on because we have everything that we need on a continent. I mean, you and I always talk about mainly like West Africa. And you think about West Africa, when you look at our coast, like I was looking at Liberia coast, I was like, whoa. I was no, like, no. Hey, if Paradise. This Jamaica, the richest European families would have done bought up all of the land and built exquisite resort. Of so course. we still got some time. Yeah, because the bottom line is we don't do it, man. Yo, know, if we if we, if we get, look, man, if we get stuck here in America, and it's like, like and I'm flying to another planet, man. I'm serious. If we <laughs> miss the aliens to come get me, <laughs> yeah, come here, man. beat me up, Scotty. You can get the hell out of here, man. I'm done, man. I'm done with this planet, man. If we lose Africa, man, we're done, man. Yeah, we're we basically done. honestly, brother, let's be realistic. We're basically homeless. Yeah, we are homeless, you know. If we don't build <laughs> Africa, when that's just common sense, man. Africans are homeless. Build it up. Let's put all our money, instead of all our money going into uh, uh, these uh, records and these uh, stuff that we buy over America, 
let's find a way how to funnel our money to the continent and everything. Let's build a going over to Africa, man. When I went to Liberia, I spent six thousand dollars in like a month, right? That's like that's money that went into the economy. I, I never spent more six thousand dollars more in my life that, that it went to a right call, righteous cause. Black you know? owned business. Black owned. I'm buying from local vendors. I'm buying my food from Africans and everything like that. And, and the bottom line is I felt happy. So the bottom line is the more we put in Africa, the more we invest. When you go over there, bring your credit card, folks. Bring your credit card. Be ready to spend, you know. Be ready to spend money and everything like that. Anthony Ali, uh, uh, let's see. Put together a fund to buy beachfront property. Yeah, apparently. Yo, look, we're already doing that, Anthony, man. So stop again with your negativity, you know. <laughs> we're doing that, you know. You know, I know with your ADOS FBA. What is ADOS FBA? Where's their beach? Where they, where, where they plan on building, you know, the F ADOS FBA, you know? Are they trying to take over Florida or something? I, I no, consider. they're not trying to build anything. That's the issue that I have with these people that are so dedicated to America. All they do is talk about America, America, we built this. That's fine. It's, but it's like, what are we doing now? Nothing. Other than just creating these divisions between black people, we need this is the time when we need to strengthen our empire, you know, and things like that. Um, look at look at one point that uh, look at what Russia had one point. They had all of these nations. And they want them back. <laughs> oh, yeah, they're gonna fight <laughs> them back. Because what do they understand? They understand the power of black, they understand the power of sorry, excuse me, nationhood. Nationhood. Yeah, you know, which so, is we're gonna make like we're gonna make Liberia a strong state. You know, we're gonna make like Sierra Leone strong. So all these states are gonna be strong because we're gonna be there. You know, in the bottom line, anything happens in American foreign policy, we want to be right there. We don't, black America don't even have a collective foreign policy. We right. did one time with the apartheid South Africa. Remember that? You know, we came together and we boycotted and everything and we brought down the apartheid South Africa. But right now we don't have any collective uh, uh, thing saying, you know, what, what's our foreign policy in Africa? We don't know. <laughs> you know, we don't know. We, we don't know. We just say, oh yeah, things look all right over there, I guess, and everything. And we're so focused on America that uh, that that we got um, we got our head so up far America's ass we can see our America's nose you know we got yeah. we're all we're all in America one hundred percent. Bottom line is Black America man we have to be uh, global you know you can call yourself whatever you want we have to be global and we have to pick a pick your favorite African country right pick it you know I don't care what you do. pick one you know mm -hmm. and bottom line is we have to make that a go because the bottom line is we cannot be like that the bottom line is this. We don't owe America anything. Black people are scared. You're going to call us not American. I don't care. You know, I think we've proven ourselves to America, right? Right. And absolutely. America still rejected us. We we're don't, we don't owe America anything. We don't, you know what I'm saying? We, we don't. So we're saying that if, if everything is right, like Thanos, right? Half of Black America will still exist. Half will be in Africa and half will be in America, you know? I said, I could have 50 50, you know? If I could take half of Black America and put them in Africa throughout the continent, man. We rule the uh, we rule the world for a thousand years, man. You know, but the bottom line, Africa needs us. They need our, pi our pipeline. We need to be able. To, we need to be in the Congo. The biggest prize is going to be the Congo. You know, that's going to be the biggest prize. You know, when we reclaim the Congo, I I dream one day we could send ten million men into the strong men into the Congo, engineers, military people. You know what I'm saying? And take that shit to frig over. Kick all the friggin' Belgium. It's gonna go down. That's gonna be the world. We have to start and, somewhere in family, you know. While you're talking all this America stuff and everything, you're fighting the wrong war. And uh, the bottom line is our war is reclaiming our continent. That's where it's gonna be, you know. And so all right, brother Mike, I could talk all night, man, but I'm gonna let you go, brother. brother. All right, black. Family, power, appreciate brother. everybody, family. We're gonna the journey continues and we're gonna talk more about what we build oh, yeah, as far as our library. Uh, connection, and we're going to be talking about some heavy investment. That's the part that, you know, we, we can't give you everything all in one show, so we're going to continue. But literally, family, we're talking about serious investment in Liberia. And uh, I'm literally a believer, and I've seen, like I've mentioned to you, family, I've been around 10 African countries, and even countries when people didn't even know what they were and things like that. Like the Gambia was one of those countries I started going to when nobody was going there. I remember back in 2006. Now look at it, man. Just like Ghana, I remember those things. Now and the Gambia Africa. looks like the Gambia looks like Atlanta right now. There's so many people from America over there, man. It's like the Atlanta and shit, you know? Serious, and the one thing that we have to do, um, one comment that you know, I want you and I to just break down uh, is this one right there. And then before we go. 
Yeah, hey, we do work together. When you look at my social network, the BAIO, we've been working together. Damani and I have been working together for years. It's just basically, Bomani does his thing. I do my thing. We come together. You know, I support him. He supports me. And we do work together. You know, I mean, I mean, I mean, we are people of buying property, man. I could buy property tomorrow in Liberia. I just don't know which is where I was. Yeah, absolutely. I got, I got, I got so many acres of land in Liberia for sale. And my brother, this on oh, Spirits Liberia, he got four properties under his belt in Liberia. You can easily buy property in Liberia. It's no big deal. That's no big. We got the money, you know. You know, what I'm saying what we want is we well, like what Monty's doing. But Monty's like the uh, like the, the 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 guy that put this all together, right? We want black people in America going to places like Liberia and Sierra Leone on a regular Absolutely. basis, you know. And it's when when you go there and you have a good time, instead of going to the Bahamas this summer or, or going to Spain or wherever like that, we're gonna make Africa the, the thing. When people start booking them airline tickets and they start saying, "Well, geez, we don't have enough airlines, we're not." Guess what? That's opportunity. You know what I'm saying? When we said when more people, I want ten Bamanis and ten College Genesis. You know what I'm saying doing what we're doing. You know, we can only do what we want to do. You know, when things start flowing, everything like that. Hey, look, there's plenty of opportunity for everybody. You know, everybody's gonna be doing different things, everything like that. But it's like this. But the main thing is, we're all focused on ret the return to Africa. Well, staying at Bob Johnson's hotel, that's gonna be revolutionary. Black revolution, yes, brother, brother. I love that place, man. Right there by the beach. Uh, those. Oh, you're gonna have a ball. Incredible this, uh, it's an incredible resort. So, family. I mean, you're talking about a black man from America that literally invested back on a black content in a black country so those are, these are shown examples so family these are things that we're doing and we have to keep on coming together and keep on putting our resources together so uh th these are things that we've been doing over the years it's just you know we don't have enough people that support the energy because we have people so focused on you know that stuff in europe and things like that so that's what we're doing family that's why we play that clip for you of uh, dr umar johnson uh literally this yeah, truth to power. And also, sixteen African countries are saying, "You know something? Hold your own nuts." Basically, <laughs> so the tide. So while you may be a Negro peers who crying over the Ukrainians, when mm -hmm. the Africans on the ground say, "We got our own goddamn problems," you know? family, and we as a people have our own problems all over the place. So that's the issue that we have with our people is that they are so focused on trying to just be with everybody else. So you know, what I'm, saying? I'm gonna give it to them. Our thoughts and prayers are with them. You know. Okay? The thoughts and prayers. What they say to us? Our thoughts and prayers are with you. Yeah. yeah, I mean, honestly, brother, you know, I wish them all the best. I wish two, you know, tribal groups of in Europe, because people act like Europe don't have tribal groups. The whole yeah. of Europe is a tribe. But like you mentioned earlier about France, that's one tribe. A whole bunch of tribes got together and make, you know, what it, what it is as people. Right. So, and even they just came out with the European Union a few decades ago. Right. And so on. So they're always trying to figure ways out to come together and things like that. But these are people that literally just... I would be going point to say that hate each other, but they find out the best thing for them to do is connect together because right. they can dominate their entire world. Yep, 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 yep. Say no more. So All right, brother Bomani. The journey continues, family. We'll see you in Liberia, July of 2023. And we can also probably see you in Liberia the different months and everything, but we're going to do I'm planning on going there in posted. July this year. So if you want to go to Liberia this year, I'll be there in July. Perfect, you know what I'm saying? God's willing, you know? God's willing, I'll be there. If everything goes right the way I'm like that, if everything goes right the way I'm playing right now, because anything can happen, you know? I don't make promises anything can happen. But I plan to be in Liberia, you know, in the arms of my fiance in this July, you know? Hopefully I bring her back, you know? Brother, congratulations, yeah. brother. There's, it's always a beautiful thing when you have, when you have black men and black women connecting together and what i like about these things is we're making example and showing people that us as black men are marrying our own black women and we're not out there chasing Asian i'm going i'm going I'm, women. Marrying, I'm marrying a liberian queen Absolutely, as a brother. Queen. <laughs> yeah she gets on my nerves sometimes but she's a queen oh i love her you know <laughs> that's beautiful man i'm excited for you brother and uh we're gonna keep it going and um the family the journey continues. Right. Right, brother. All right, Bomani. Peace out, brother. Peace.